just love Paradise Beach. Have you ever seen water so blue or sand so glittery and soft? The water is always the perfect temperature. Not too warm, not too cold. To quote my girl Goldilocks, it's just right. And the sand is perfect for royal sandcastle building. Look! Wow, that looks just like your palace. Watch this. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is story time. The underwater ball. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Oh look, a rainbow. <laughs> wow, and a dolphin, yay. Oh hey, it's Dolph. Hey guys, watch this. Woohoo! I'm gonna do that at the underwater ball. Probably gonna get first place in the dance contest. Underwater ball? I guess my invitation got lost in the mail. What? OMG whiz! Of course you're invited! How would I not invite my bestie? Cindy, it's going to be the best ball you ever went to, and I know that's like your thing. Looks like everyone was enjoying themselves on Paradise Beach. But on another shore nearby, recognize them? Cinderella's old stepsisters and stepmother, Unga and Gritzel, hadn't been up to much good since their old days of being mean to Cinderella. Oh, and look, that's the sea witch. She was back at it and just being a nasty old crumb, casting wicked spells and turning people into sea urchins. Boy, what a gang. Oh, that's so not cool. Look at them, cavorting, clapping, having a good time. Ugh. Why can't we have a good time? We are having a good time. We're at the beach, aren't we? I wouldn't exactly call Misery Cove a beach. Yeah, the sea is full of jellyfish. Um, that's not a jellyfish, that's a diaper. Exactly! All the garbage from the dump flows into the water. And there's no sand, just jagged rocks and slippery marbles. And it's always raining. It's awful. No one ever invites us to royal balls anymore. Where are we supposed to meet princes? I want to be a princess. These two are always whining. Can you turn them into urchins, please? You really want to go to that wretched underwater ball? Yes. yes. I can get you in, but there's one catch. There's always a catch. Yeah, and the catch is, you must get me that wand. The fairy godmother's wand? Yes, I'm a powerful sea witch. But if I had the fairy godmother's wand, all the powers of the world, under the sea and on land. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. Uh-oh, she's starting to sound evil and scheming. Cue the maniacal laughter. <laughs> Wait, one question. What? It's an underwater ball. We can't swim. That's easy. I'll just turn you into mermaids. Really? You can do that? Yeah, and you'll meet some handsome sea princes, too. Sound good? I'm in. Where do I sign up? You gotta go stand in the water. I don't have my regular powers on the land. <laughs> It's so cold. Owie, I think I stepped on a crab. Mermaid spell, abracab. Um. Can you try again? I think something went wrong. Oh, sorry. See, I really need that wand. Okay, mermaid spell, abracad. Wow. Look at me, I'm a beautiful mermaid. <gasps> That's so magical. Look at this fin, isn't it neat? Wouldn't you say? Whoa, 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 hold on. My magic doesn't cover copyright infringement. Sing something else, Mariah. Oh, look at me, I'm a mermaid. La, 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 la. What about me? How am I supposed to escort my daughters to an underwater ball? Shouldn't I be a mermaid too? You give me that wand and I'll take care of you too, sweetheart. And just so that we're clear, what happens if I don't get you the wand? You'll be turned into a miserable little sea urchin. <laughs> ah, little seaweed stuck in the throat there. So the underwater ball was shaping up to be a pretty epic time. Princesses, mean stepsister mermaids, sea witches, fairy godmothers, and a plot for grand theft larceny. Ooh, interesting. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Everyone was getting super excited for the underwater ball. Unga and Greensel were practicing their mermaid dance moves. Ah! And Cinderella.
Cinderella and the Little Mermaid were discussing their outfits and the general goings on of the underwater ball. How does one dance at an underwater ball? <laughs> Same as anywhere else, like this. Um, is this a dance battle? Because I'm ready. Hey, why didn't anyone invite me to the dance party? I've got moves. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, oh, here we go. Oh, that's good. <gasps> Do the dolph. Oh, yeah. Do the dolph. Do the dolph. Wow, this is so fun. <sighs> okay, so <laughs> what does one eat at an underwater ball? Well, cake doesn't work so well. It gets very soggy. And never serve shrimp cocktail. It makes the shrimp very upset. Noted. <laughs> so what does one wear at an underwater ball? <gasps> Glass flippers. Get it? Do you get it? Glass flippers? No, forget it. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Fashion, fashion party, party montage, montage time. time! It's fashion montage time! If you're going to a ball, try on clothes. If you're going to a ball, do your hair. If you're going to a ball and you want to twirl around, make sure you pick a twirly twirly gown. Will it be this? Will it be that? I might even try on a hat. Ooh, flowy. <laughs> so angelic. So cute. Too casual. Purple, blue. Purple, blue, purple and blue? OMG, I love it. It's perfect for the underwater ball. That looks so beautiful. Now time to accessorize. Ooh, too much? Ooh, fancy. Wait a minute, I don't need sunglasses for an underwater ball. I need goggles. Hello, hello. Whoa. If you're going to a ball, choose some shoes. If you're going to a ball, choose some shoes. Ooh, sparkly. I love it. You know what would make this like a million times more fun? What? Fairy godmother magic. Did someone say fairy godmother? Yay! <laughs> Trust me, this is the most fun way to get ready for a ball. What's a look you'd like to try, honey? Um, I guess I've always wanted to have rainbow hair. Done. Whoa! You look awesome! How about fairy wings? Oh, yeah! Yay! That is amazing! Meanwhile, someone was watching. Cinderella's stepmother was spying and scheming how to steal the fairy godmother's magic wand. She tried distracting the fairy godmother. Yoo-hoo! Over here! Did someone say something? I said maybe a gown made of diamonds? Oh yes! I love that idea! She tried to take it while the fairy godmother dozed off for a minute. <sighs> Where were we? Pink mohawk? Yeah, I can do that! She even tried to go ninja style and swipe it. Voila! A unicorn horn, honey! So close! Finally, the stepmother dressed herself up like a maid and entered the room. Don't mind me, I'm just coming to tidy up a bit. Hi, uh, who are you? I'm, uh, I'm Wa Wanda. I'm Wanda. I'm just here to steal. I, I, I mean to clean up a little. Hmm, you look so familiar. No, no, I don't think so. You don't know me. Okay. Got it. Ah, watch out! I've never held a magic wand before. I wonder if I could do some spells. Oh, no! Oh, this is very dangerous. I better get it to the sea witch ASAP. Should I just ask my fairy godmother to turn me into a mermaid for the night? Oh, that would be fun! We could be twinsies! Fairy godmother, I know you said I would be fine underwater with the breathing and all, but maybe it would be super fun to be a mermaid for the night! That does sound fun! Let me see what I can do! Now with a wave of my wand... What? My wand! It has to be here somewhere! You just had it! It's gone! I better go fly around and see if I can spot it! Oh, this is bad. This is very, very bad. If that wand gets into the wrong hands, we could be in very big trouble. Well, don't look at me. I don't even have hands. We have to find that wand. 
but it was too late. The wand had already gotten into the wrong hands, and she was ready to do some damage. Cue the maniacal laughter. <laughs> oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. It was finally time for the underwater ball. Everyone was so excited. Well, almost everyone. Cinderella's stepsisters, Boonga and Gritzel, were certainly pumped. OMG, Gritzel, we've never looked better. We're like on fire. We're flaming hot like Cheetos. I can't wait to meet the sea princes. They're probably so handsome. And I bet they have amazing underwater palaces and like so much money. And Cinderella's stepmother was excited. She had given the sea witch her coveted fairy godmother wand, and now her daughters would be married off to distinguished sea princes. That would make her royalty too. And of course, the sea witch was very, extremely, totally super excited for the underwater ball. She would make a grand entrance as the most fearsome, powerful witch that the world had ever seen. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. <laughs> yes, she was still cackling maniacally and was mad with power. She hadn't even gotten around to attempting any new magic yet. The Little Mermaid, Dolph, and Cinderella were excited, but also a little nervous. Now that the fairy godmother's wand was missing, there was a damper on everything. What if someone bad has it and they ruin the party? They could do much worse than ruin the party. What if they turn me into a porpoise? That's your biggest fear? Aren't porpoises basically the same as dolphins? Ha! <laughs> they wish! <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, well, anyway, I guess let's go and hope for the best. Yeah, as they say, keep calm and party on. The underwater ball was a smash. Everyone was there. Everyone except... Where is the sea witch? She's supposed to introduce us to our sea princes. Um, uh, excuse me? Ew, what? Are you Unga? Yeah, who wants to know? I'm your date, Prince Puff or Fish. But you can just call me Puff. The sea witch arranged for us to meet. Hold on one moment. Is this guy serious? He's a puffer fish. Ritzel? Ah! Jellyfish! I'm your date. I'm Prince Bob. Prince Blob? Prince Bob! Would you like to dance? Ugh, fine. Whatever, let's dance, I guess. That's so not cool. You are beautiful. Really? Yeah. You two are the most beautiful mermaids we've ever seen. And so graceful and kind and cool. Unga and Gritzel were not used to having anyone like them. They usually put their worst foot forward. Maybe now that they had fins, things were looking up. I kind of like these guys. Me too. They weren't the only ones having a good time. The Little Mermaid, Cinderella, and Dolph had almost forgotten about the whole Fairy Godmother wand fiasco. They were boogieing down when... Hear ye, hear ye. Please welcome the... The most powerful witch in the world. <laughs> oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. That's right. In my hands, I have the power to control the entire world. Land and sea. Bow down to me, my pathetic little servants. I am the queen of everything. Ah, this is scary. Oh no, this is the worst. I was the almighty wicked sea witch and now I hold all earthly power. For I have the fairy godmother's magic wand. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I want a puppy. What? I want a puppy. Go away, you little urchin. I'm busy taking over the world. You're my fairy godmother. I want a puppy. Go away. What are you doing? Are you holding your breath? Who 
whose child is this? Please, take her away. As the evil queen of the world, I order you, take her away. <laughs> that was hilarious. Oof, tough break, huh? What do you want? Well, my wand for one thing. But since you have it, you may as well know you're a fairy godmother now. That comes with great responsibility. And power. <laughs> well, yes, the power to do good. Do what now? Do good. Fairy godmothers use their power to help a child in need, like I did with Cinderella. So this is your kid, I guess. She seems a little demanding, but I'm sure you'll be happy to make all her wishes come true. I wish for a pony. Now, now, now! Wait, no, I want you to be my pony. Give me a ride, pony. Do I have to? Yes, I'm afraid so. Give me up, horsey. Well, that was weird. I don't think she'll last long, honey. <laughs> I didn't know the magic wand could only be used for good. We were so worried. What would a fairy godmother do with evil powers? Well, strictly wish granters and happy makers. Fairy godmother policy. Faster, faster! Not every recipient is as kind-hearted as Cinderella. Well, now that we're not afraid anymore, let's have the dance contest. Woo! -hoo! Woo -hoo! Oh, okay, Olga. Woohoo! Go Dolph! <laughs> Here's my girl, Little Mermaid, oh yeah. Wow, this is so fun. Having fun yet? Here, I don't want this magic wand anymore. Making people happy, stinks. Well, okay, but I am gonna have to use it to render you powerless and unwicked for the rest of the night. I don't want you ruining the party. Fine, I don't care anymore, just take it. <laughs> I hate sparkles. I love sparkles, yay! Now, let's get you a horsey. I ain't your fairy godmother anymore, kid. Now scram. Mm, I don't think so, I like you. Now, get you up. The underwater ball was turning out to be a success. Apart from the sea witch, everyone was having a blast. Even Unga and Greensel. Mom, we met the most fabulous princes and we're in L-U-V. That spells love. Please meet Prince Puff and Prince Bob, our true loves. I can't shake your hand. I have stingers, but a pleasure to meet you. Aw, true love. Officially the best underwater ball I've ever been to. Isn't this the only underwater ball you've ever been to? Well, yes, but still, best time ever. And I don't even have to be home by midnight. And you still have both of your shoes. <gasps> Success. And hey, Dolph, the sea witch didn't turn you into a porpoise. Thank goodness. Isn't a porpoise almost the exact same as a dolphin? Don't get him started. There's only one thing left to do. Let's do the Dolph, everybody. <laughs> What a great story. Oh, I just love happy endings. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is story time. Today we're reading The Little Mermaid. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Very little. See, there she is. Anyway, The Little Mermaid was not just a mermaid, she was also a princess, daughter of the mighty sea king. And she had five older sisters, also princesses. One of the Little Mermaid's favorite things to do was listen to her sister's stories about the world beyond the water. See, whenever one of the princesses turned 18, she was allowed to go to the surface of the ocean. There, she could see the sky, and the birds, and the clouds. And if they were extra lucky, they might even see a ship with humans on board. Sometimes, though, the Little Mermaid got the sense that her sisters were just making stuff up. Human people have eight legs. They kind of look like octopuses. <laughs> that was so funny. I think it's octopi. Whatever. And some humans have a horn on their head, like a narwhal. No way! You'll see. Land people have eyes all over their bodies, so they can see everything at once. Nuh-uh! Yeah, they do! Blech! I don't believe 
believe it. I think humans are beautiful. I guess they are, if you like lots of eyes and horns and stuff. When the Little Mermaid was almost 100% sure they were fibbing, she would go to her dad. Dad, is it true that human people have eight legs and a narwhal horn and lots of eyes and that they wrestle sharks and eat whale blubber for dessert? The only thing you should know about people is that they can be dangerous and you should never speak to one. Ugh, when am I going to get my chance to see the humans? I feel like I'll never turn 18. Uh-oh, she better watch out. But of course she did grow up. See, there she is, right before her 18th birthday. Hi, <laughs> let me tell you about life as a sea princess. We lived in a palace made of shells and pieces of treasure from sunken ships. At night, each princess slept in a bed of beautiful sea flowers. And you've heard of a school of fish, right? That's where we studied and learned. Actually, we did lots of things that human girls do, just a little differently. We played sports. Wow, this is so fun. We went to the movies. Only problem, popcorn gets soggy underwater. We acted in plays. To swim or not to swim? That is the question. You should have seen me in South Pacific. The ocean time said I was a star. Imagine, me a starfish. <laughs> so basically, I was just a regular girl. Oh, except my best friend was a dolphin. <laughs> Hi there. I guess you humans might not think that's too regular. Dolphin, I would swim around and get into all kinds of adventures. <laughs> like one time, we swam way super deep down into the part of the ocean that's so dark. You can't see your own tail. And then all of a sudden, we saw a glowing blob floating towards us. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Ah, giant bioluminescent marine worm with fangs. Creepy! Bioluminescent means it glows. Yeah, obviously. Let's get out of here. And then another time, we hitched a ride with a shark. They can swim real fast. And they have big, scary teeth. But they can't turn their heads, so they're like, guys, what's back there? I don't know, man. I don't see nothing. The craziest adventure was when we sneaked into the sea witch's house. She lived in a giant, sunken pirate ship. Super creepy, but also super cool. <laughs> the sea witch had gone out to get a carton of whale milk for her coffee. We swam inside and... Wow! Cool! <laughs> we were playing with a sword. Well, I was. <laughs> Dolph can't hold a sword. No hands! And I was just about to defeat the pretend pirate ghost that I was battling when... La 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 la! Hide! No! Let's get out of here! Out of where? Ah! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure! Come on! Chapter two, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! Ah! Care to tell me what you're doing in my house? Nothing! Yeah, we took a wrong turn. Yeah, I mean, we don't even like it here. I mean, <laughs> that's not what I mean. I mean, I'm, uh, see ya! Not so fast. Are you the daughter of the king? Um, yeah? I saw you on TV. You sang the Oceanic Anthem before the big squid dash in the orca race last year. Oh, down in the sea, by the bronzer, the light, or the sea sponge we. Oh, I just love your voice. Here, have some tea. Oh, why, thank you. Excuse me. <laughs> yes, a beautiful voice. You wouldn't want to trade it, would you? <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. My voice? Yes. I would give you something wonderful in return. Anything you wished. We should really get going. Yes, I hate to be rude, but no thanks. Okay, we are never going back there. Definitely not. See you tomorrow at my place? Not if I see you first. Fun fact, dolphins have very good eyesight. It's true. And really good hearing. Yup. And they're nosy. Bottle nosy. Heard that too, and it wasn't very clever. Oh, well, I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> he has a bottle nose, get it? Anyway, you may be wondering what was happening the next day. Nothing major. 
just my 18th birthday. <laughs> we were having a huge party and everyone was there. All my friends and my sisters and my mom and dad. That is amazing. There was a pinata, tons of balloons, and a pin the tail on the tiger shark. Hey, cut that out. And of course, we had a huge cake. <laughs> no candles though, because you know, water. <laughs> but I still made a wish. I wish that when I swim to the top of the ocean and look out, that I'll see a real live human prince, a handsome one, not like what my crazy sisters keep telling me about. Like, I hope he only has two eyes. <laughs> like the handsome princes I've seen in my fairy tale books. I wanna see him dance and ride a bike and play soccer. Oh, and I'd also like to dance and ride a bike and play soccer. That sounds cool. Hey, maybe I wanna be a human, just for a little while. What would you do if you were there? Ahem. <clears throat> oh, sorry, <laughs> and I'm done. What do you wish for? I can't tell you that, but I will tell you that first thing tomorrow morning, we're going to the top of the ocean. I do that every morning. It's how I breathe. Oh, <laughs> I always forget that you're an air breather. <laughs> hey, have you ever seen a person? Not up close. What do you want to see a human for? No reason. The Little Mermaid was so excited about her first trip to the surface of the ocean that she could barely sleep. She tossed and turned in her bed all night. Finally, she drifted off to sleep and dreamed of having human feet. Hello, fellow human people. Thank you for coming to my dance recital. <laughs> now watch me dance with my brand new feet. Wow, that is so cool. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, eyeball guy, yuck. But the prince was really handsome. <sighs> the next morning, the Little Mermaid and Dolph swam to the top of the ocean where the water meets the sky. The last one there is a rotten turtle egg. Look, a ship. The prince, it's him. The who, what? Let's go! When the Little Mermaid and Dolph got to the surface, they looked out and saw a magnificent ship, definitely fit for a prince! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure! Come on! Chapter three, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! There's gotta be a prince on that ship, I just know it! What prince? That prince. What a dream boat! It is a nice boat, I guess. No, he's the dream boat. <laughs> that means he's a total cutie pie. I don't like pie. Humans love pie. Gosh, you don't know anything about people, do you, Dolph? I know that that one is looking right at us. What? Ah! I can't let the prince see me like this. Like what? As a mermaid. But you are a mermaid. Yeah, and he's a human, Dolph. Never in any of the hundreds of fairy tales that I've read have I ever heard of a human falling in love with a mermaid. Love? Already? Sheesh. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm getting a little carried away, but he looks just like a storybook prince. Not at all like my sisters described. They said humans have horns and eight legs and a hundred eyes, but this human only has two perfectly perfect eyes. Maybe we should go home. I have a better idea. Let's go see what he's doing now. It's his birthday too? O-M-G whiz. We are so meant to be. Look, he's about to blow out his candles. Real candles, Dolph. Oh, wow. I wonder what his wish is gonna be. Maybe it's to meet a mermaid. <laughs> I wish that he would wish to meet a cool mermaid. Me, obviously. <laughs> and fall in love. And then like magic, I turn into a human with feet. <laughs> we could go on long walks on the beach or do a three-legged race or get matching patties, go shoe shopping, and of course, dance. We would probably be the best dancers in the whole world. Aw, that is so nice. Are you done? I'm getting hungry. We've been here forever. Hold your seahorses just a little longer. Dolph, they are dancing. 
That's dancing? It looks like they got shocked by an electric eel. It's beautiful. Oh, look at all the colors. It's so pretty. <laughs> what is it? I think they're fireworks. I've, I've heard of them, but I never knew they were so cool. Look, that one looks like a smiley face. <laughs> cool. Wow, this is so fun. The two watched until the fireworks were over and all the people had gone down into the boat's cabin. Okay, show's over. Let's go home. Wait, look. Starlight, star bright. First star I see tonight. I wish I may. I wish I might. Have the wish I wish tonight. Didn't he already make a wish on his birthday candles? Dolph, be quiet. I wish I didn't have to get married. At least, not to any of the princesses around here. I just want to meet someone who gets me. I get you! Someone who likes the things I like. Someone I can talk to. Someone down to earth who likes to take long walks and dance. I'm here! It's me! Be mine! Huh? <laughs> Whoa! I'll save you! What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. We have to save the prince. I'm on it. We'll never be able to get him back on the ship. Let's carry him to shore. Got him. Who are you? I'm the one you wished for. Uh-oh, here comes a human. We have to go. But. No buts, let's go. Well, goodbye, my prince. I'll come back for you, I promise. That prince is so handsome. Sir, are you okay? Where is she? Where's my princess? You fell overboard. You must have hit your head. No, she was here. She saved me. Whatever you say, sir. Back at the sea palace, the little mermaid told her sisters all about her adventure with the prince. No way. I don't believe you. It's true, I saved him. Well, Dolph helped. <laughs> but he looked right into my eyes. And you know what? It's true, love. I just know it. Give it up. You're a mermaid. He's a human. Um, never gonna happen. Yeah, go to sleep. That's a good idea, because then I can dream of my prince all night. And she did. The little mermaid dreamt of her prince, but something was off. Ah. Oh no, that's not right. Sea witch. Oh no, no, I'm not a witch. 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 That's it. I'll go to the sea witch. She'll know how to give me human feet. And so the little mermaid went straight to the sea witch. Ah, the king's daughter. What do you want, sweetheart? Um, well, I wanted to ask you, um, about feet. You want to ask me about feet? Well, I guess what I really want is to be a human. Really? How interesting. Is it? You know, when you were here last, I offered you a trade. You can have anything you wish for, and I'll have your voice. Can't you do some witch magic? Like, how about I just pay you, and then you turn me into a human, and then you can work up some other spell for a nice voice. So, um, not that your voice isn't already nice. Oh, I love your voice. Yeah, sure. Well, that was weird. And why do you want to be a human so badly? Well, there's this prince, and I saved him from drowning. Well, <laughs> Dolph did, but that's besides the point. I think I love him. Oh, the prince, not Dolph. Oh, I love the prince. I don't know, whatever. I mean, it's complicated. Okay, here's what I can do. I'll grant your wish. You'll be a human. Really? But you only have one month. If you can't make the prince fall in love with you in one month, then you'll return to the sea. Not as a mermaid, but as a sea urchin. A sea urchin? And everyone knows sea urchins are the worst. Yeah, they're awful. They hide in the sand and stick you with their stingers. Yeah, terrible. Oh, and I will be needing that voice of yours. But how will I talk to the prince? He needs to hear how funny and charming I am. <laughs> he needs to hear me sing. Oh. And hear my laugh. <laughs> and hear my Dolph impression. Hey, I'm Dolph. I'm over here. Little mermaid, let's swim. Oh. I guess that one's more of an inside joke, but the point is I need my voice. We can trade. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Trade? 
Who are you? I'm the girl who saved you. Ah, Sea Witch. Uh, well, maybe it's more mysterious and enchanting with no voice at all. Very well. Let's review. You. You'll be a human, but if you can't make the prince fall in love with you, then you'll turn into a sea urchin, and I'll have your voice forever. Deal? Deal. Abracadabra. Pleasure doing business with you. What's that? I can't hear you. Oh, your feet? Just swim towards the land. When you emerge from the water, you will have your very own feet. Oh. The Little Mermaid swam towards the shore faster than she'd ever swum before. She was so excited. But then she started to think about everything that was at stake. What if she and the prince didn't get along? Oh no, she hadn't thought of that. What if the plan backfires and she gets turned into a sea urchin never to see Dolph and her family ever again? But the Little Mermaid soon forgot her worries because she had arrived at the beach. She had two fully functioning, not at all tentacly feet. Owie, ow, 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 ugh, ugh. Sea urchin, told you they were the worst. But at least I have my very own feet. <laughs> Let the dancing begin. Well, as soon as my foot stops stinging, darn urchins. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Okay, first order of business, shoes. <laughs> I know all about shoes because of the fairy tales I've read. <laughs> Maybe I can get some glass slippers like Cinderella. <gasps> These are perfect. May I help you? Oh, I forgot about the whole no talking thing. Darn sea witch and her weird spells. Don't worry kids, I can still talk to you guys, but just no one in the story can hear me. Ooh. That makes sense. You wanna buy these shoes? Those are a kid's size six. Let's find something in your size. Ooh, these are much better. Wait, where are you going? You have to pay for those. You know, with money? Do you have money? Then I'm afraid you'll have to go. I'll buy them for her. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. What happened? Why don't you have any shoes? I think she's saying she fell off the boat. You poor thing. Can you not speak at all? You must have hit your head or something when you fell overboard. I'll take care of you. But Princess Lily, she looks like a common ragamuffin to me. You are very rude. And you are coming with me. You'll live in the palace until you're better. Oh, that is so nice. Um, awesome. <laughs> if she's the princess, then she must be related to the prince. Oh. Princess Lily was so nice. She took me to get new clothes. And then it was time to go to the palace. Oh man, was it nice. Don't get me wrong, I love the sea palace, but this place was amazing. For example, they had this thing called an elevator. It's like, Magic. <laughs> You're on one floor, and then you go in this little box, press a bunch of buttons, and they light up, and then, presto, you appear on another floor. <laughs> After I got tired riding the elevator, the princess and I chilled out by the pool, where I tried to impress her with my water skills. <laughs> Turns out it's a lot harder without a tail. <laughs> that was so funny. Still, it was fun. Could it really be this easy? <laughs> First day as a human, I'm already best buds with the princess. <laughs> and it was only getting better because it was almost dinner time and that meant I would meet the prince. I was so nervous. Surely the prince would recognize me and it would be love at first sight or second sight, whatever. <laughs> but when we went to dinner, it was like he'd never seen me before in his life. Bummer. The princess explained to everyone that she had found me wandering around the town with no shoes, hungry and lost after I'd fallen off a ship passing in the night. She was wrong, obviously, but works for me. <laughs> hey, I fell off a ship yesterday too. Small world. Yeah, he fell overboard at his birthday party. He thinks a mermaid saved him. <laughs> it's true. I can't remember her face, but I'm positive I saw her. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Mermaids aren't real, Jeff. They're just pretend, Jeff. 
Where does your family live, dear? Mom, I told you, she can't talk. Can she write? Oh, I didn't think of that. Great idea. Uh-oh, what would I tell them? Obviously not the truth. They just said they don't believe in mermaids. I know. Well, what does it say? It's all just nonsensical gibberish, sir. She must have bumped her head and forgotten how to write. I'll call the doctor tomorrow. For now, dinner is served. Ah! I guess she doesn't like fish. She might just be full. She ate a lot of ice cream earlier. Dear Prince Jeff, you're right, mermaids are real. I know because I am one, and I'm the one who saved you. You may be wondering, why does she have feet if she's a mermaid? Well, I went to the sea witch who cast a spell on me, giving me feet so I could meet you. And that's also why I can't talk. See, she made me trade my voice for the feet. I don't really know why. Witches' curses are usually pretty weird. Anyway, I like you. Do you like me? Circle one. Yes, no, or maybe. Yours truly. Gasp! It's a message from the sea witch. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Not a word, no cheating. That's all it said, but what could it mean? Oh no, did it mean I couldn't write to the prince either? No fair. This was gonna be harder than I thought. The next day, the doctor came in to check on me. Uh-huh. Stick out your tongue and say, ah. Oh, right. So you can't say a word, huh? And you don't remember anything? This is clearly a case of head bump induced non rememberiness I recommend lots of rest and ice cream. Ooh, this is so exciting. And you'll stay with us until you're better. Your family must be worried sick. And they were worried. The Sea King and all the Little Mermaid sisters were looking all over for her. Hi, excuse me, your highness. I uh, might know where your daughter is, maybe. You do? Where? Well, she's been very interested in humans the last couple days. And? Um... Speak, Dolphin! Speak! I think maybe she found a way to go on land, your majesty, sir. But there's no way she could get onto land. Unless... La 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 Ziddy dee 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 Doo doo ba 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 Yes, who is it? Uh-oh! Where's my daughter? Who? My daughter! Oh, right! Her! She's up there, with the humans. She thinks she's in love. <laughs> with a human? We made a deal and the spell's been cast. I can't interfere. Anyway, I'm busy recording my album. I'm calling it Witch's Brew. It's jazz. <laughs> that was hilarious. You have until tonight to bring her home or else. The Sea King was so angry that he threw the Sea Witch in jail. You're making a huge mistake. Then he sent a message to his daughter. Huh? This time it was from my dad, not the stinky Sea Witch with another rule. My dearest daughter, you must come home at once. You do not know the dangers of humans. I've sent my finest trained seal to escort you home. Love, Dad. I missed my dad, but I couldn't leave yet. Things were going really well on land. Plus, there's the whole curse thing. I tried to show the seal that I was safe and he could let my family know that I was doing just fine. <coughs> but I'm not sure he understood. So like I said, things were going really well with the prince and princess. They taught me all kinds of stuff about the human world. Of course, they thought they were just helping me remember. You know, because I fell off a ship and bumped my head. But the best thing I learned was how to dance. That is amazing. The royal ball is coming up and you have to go. It's so much fun. Oh, ignore him. He still misses his imaginary mermaid girlfriend. Hey, Jeff, maybe you can invite the mermaid to the ball. <laughs> You're very good at line dancing. Save a dance for me at the ball? Awesome. He likes me. Well, he doesn't exactly know that it's me he likes, but we're gonna dance at the ball. That's something. Jeff, 
You know that daddy is going to make you dance with Princess Esmeralda all night. That's who Jeff is supposed to marry. They've been promised to each other for years. Wait, what? But that's not how this is supposed to go. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Little Mermaid was very upset. I mean, wouldn't you be if you thought you might turn into a sea urchin? You remember the deal with the sea witch. Well, let me remind you, flashback time. Let's review. You'll be a human, but if you can't make the prince fall in love with you, then you'll turn into a sea urchin, and I'll have your voice forever. Deal? Deal? How was I supposed to know that Prince Jeff was already getting hitched? What am I going to do? What would you do if you were there? While the Little Mermaid was busy thinking, her dad, the Sea King, was busy coming up with a plan for her rescue. I'll just swim up there, and no, that won't work. Can't swim on land. Nope. Okay, I'll send all the sea turtles and crabs up there and demand she come home. They can walk. She'll just refuse to come. Wait, I know. I'll send all the seagulls to fly into the palace and pick her up and carry her home. But didn't the sea witch say she has to stay or else she'll turn into a sea urchin? Right, the sea witch. I'll just make a new deal with the sea witch. No, never negotiate with witches. But off they went to make a deal with the evil sea witch. Back on land, the Little Mermaid had come up with a very good plan. Okay, this is such a good idea, you guys. I'll just act like a mermaid. Then the prince will totally recognize me. Then he'll want to marry me and not this Princess Esmeralda. So obvious. OMG, I love it. The Little Mermaid was sure this plan would work, and soon she and Prince Jeff would be in true L-O-V-E. That spells love, by the way. <laughs> Meanwhile, I told you, the spell has been cast. Nothing I can do. What if you could have my palace? Say what now? You send me to land as a human. And if I can't get my daughter back, you win. You get my kingdom. Now that's interesting. Wait, your majesty, the mermaid really, really, really likes the prince. What if she doesn't want to come back with you? Well, you'll have to help me convince her. Me? Uh, and what happens to us if we fail? If you fail, you turn into a jellyfish, and I will have everything. And if we succeed? You won't. <laughs> that is so not cool. But if you do, I'll swim away to another ocean and never set a tentacle in your kingdom again. What's the catch? The catch is you can't tell her why you're there. The only choice is to make her fall out of love with the prince. Do we have a deal? Okay, let's review the pros and cons here. It's a deal. Oy vey. It's finally time for the royal ball. Okay, just act like a mermaid. But it turned out that acting like a mermaid was a lot harder than she expected. Apart from her doing swimming dance moves, she was at a total loss. Here ye, here ye, please make way for the lovely Princess Esmeralda. Whoa, we have legs, this is cool. I don't like it, these are feet. They're totally weird. They're not so bad. Look, I can jump. Oh, that's kind of neat. Okay, okay, enough nonsense. Let's go find my daughter. Meanwhile, back at the ball, the Little Mermaid had gotten a chance to meet Esmeralda and... Guys, Princess Esmeralda was totally cool! She was funny and pretty and smart and totally a good dancer. She even did this really funny trick where she pretended to find a coin behind my ear. I'm telling you, she was the best. Surely Prince Jeff must be totally head over heels in love with her. But Jeff just stared out at sea, looking for his mermaid. That is so sad. Oh yeah, my plan. He just needs to see me in my natural habitat. Girl overboard. <laughs> All right, I forgot that swimming with human legs is kind of tricky. Help, help, she's drowning. I'll save her. I've got you. Not the romantic rescue I was expecting. When the two made it safely to shore, everyone cheered. Yeah! Yay, great job. You swim like a natural, like a dolphin. Thanks, I'm Princess Esmeralda. Who are you? Uh, I'm Prince uh, Dolphrey. Dolphrey? Yep, Prince Dolphrey. 
and this is my uncle, the king of Sea Town. Anyway, lovely to meet you, princess. Everyone was very happy to welcome the royal travelers. Everyone except for the little mermaid. That is totally Dolph and my dad. Who invited them? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dolph and the Sea King, I mean Prince Dolphery and the King of Sea Town had just arrived and everyone was very happy to welcome the new guests to the Royal Ball. The Little Mermaid, of course, was a little suspicious, right? I mean, why are they here to take me back to sea? I can't just leave. And how did they get feet? They must have made a deal with the Sea Witch. That can't be good. We're all doomed. How are they ever going to get out of this one? And look at Dolph, laughing it up with Esmeralda like they've known each other for years! <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Ahem, Dolph, what happened to the rescue mission? I'm on it. I'll distract Esmeralda so the Little Mermaid can fall in love with the prince. Then the spell will be broken. But then she'll be a human forever, Dolph! Oh, right. We have to make her fall out of love. So the two of them hatched a plan to make the Little Mermaid fall out of love. They put marbles on the dance floor to make them look clumsy. But the Little Mermaid just thought it was a cool new dance and joined in. They released helium out of party balloons to make his voice all squeaky. Would you like a glass of punch? Whoa, what's up with my voice? But the Little Mermaid thought the prince was just being so hilarious. I thought that would work. Me too! <laughs> that was so funny. The Sea King and Dolph even shaved a skunk stripe in his hair when he wasn't looking. Huh? But the Little Mermaid didn't think it was a weird haircut or anything. She thought he looked really cool. I don't get it. No matter what we do, she just likes him more. Ugh, who could like a human? I don't know, they're not so bad. Like, take Esmeralda. She's pretty cool. Not you, too. What? I just think she's neat. Actually, I'm gonna go see what she's up to right now. Dolph! I don't know, she might need some punch or something. The Sea King didn't know what to do. His plan was failing. His daughter had a mega crush on a human and it seems like there was nothing he could do to change her mind. Pretty soon, the Sea Witch would win and gain control of his entire Sea Kingdom. He and Dolph would be useless jellyfish and the Little Mermaid would be a sea urchin. Suddenly, the Sea King had an idea. Of course! Why didn't I think of this before? I'll just tell everyone that my daughter's a mermaid. The royal family would never let their son marry a mermaid. Excuse me, I have an announcement. Oh no. I just wanted to say, it's so refreshing to see how nice you are to this mermaid. Mermaid? Mermaid? Who's a mermaid? Where? Right there. You're a mermaid? My mermaid, you saved me. Aw, that's so sweet. He's obviously joking, Jeffrey. Yeah, don't be silly. Of course it's a joke. I knew that. <laughs> no, it's true. She's a mermaid, and the sea witch gave her feet. The sea witch? This guy's hilarious. I mean... Right? Who ever heard of a sea witch? <laughs> oh, no. What's going on? Uh, long story. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The sea witch had just crashed the party and um, it was awkward. So, um, anyone know any good jokes? I know one. How did the sea urchin cross the road? Uh, how? It didn't. I don't get it. It's an inside joke. Oh, now I get it. Time's almost up, by the way. Uh-oh, I had to get the prince to declare his love for me, and fast. If that didn't happen soon, then I'd be a sea urchin forever. What's the matter, dear? Cheer up, it's a party, right, Prince Jeff? Wait a second, your voice. You sound so familiar. Darling, don't you remember me? I rescued you. But you're not a mermaid. No, sweetie, I'm not, but... You fell in love with me, remember? I remember now. And you said we were to be married, remember that? That's right. Excellent, let's all just forget about all that silly nonsense about mermaids and sea witches, okay? Okay. Great, all right, who's ready for a royal wedding? Cool. Sounds great. Mazel tov. Oh no, 
everyone was hypnotized by the evil sea witch's spell. What? No, that can't be. Well, everyone except for me, Dolph, and my dad. I guess this spell only worked on real humans. I don't even know how evil magic works. Okay, quick rundown on why this is very, very bad. If Prince Jeff marries her, then the mermaid turns into a voiceless sea urchin. And we turn into jellyfish, I think. All these curses and spells are starting to get confusing. Then the sea witch will take over the entire sea kingdom. And she'll be royalty here on land if she marries the prince. She could take over the whole world. We gotta stop this. Yeah. And now the part where we come up with a plan. Operation Defeat the Evil Sea Witch, part one. He may have had human legs, but my dad was still the almighty sea king. And that meant he could summon an army of the toughest sea creatures to help us. <gasps> Is this thing on? <gasps> well, what's up, you majesty? I need you to gather all your friends. It's time to battle. Ooh, this is so exciting. While the Sea King explained the situation to the shark, Dolph began his part of the plan, which brings us to Operation Defeat the Evil Sea Witch, part two. E -e 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 hey guys, Dolph, is that you? What happened to your tail? Uh, that's not important, but listen up. I need your help. Dolph explained everything to his dolphin brethren while I went to work on my part of the plan, stall for time. The sea witch had put everyone to work while she was just lounging around in a deck chair, sipping on a pineapple drink and barking orders. I don't want crab, I want lobster. You call these flowers, try again. More shiny thingies, more ruffly stuff, more everything. Jeez, what a bridezilla. That is so not cool. We're almost finished with this dress. Oh no, we have to start all over. Oops. Wedding today, 3 p.m. <laughs> now to find Prince Jeff. I'm so excited to marry my true love. Poor guy, he doesn't know what he's saying. Hey, let me out. I have to get married to my lovely bride. Ugh. Okay, I hope Dolph and my dad are ready. What do you think you're doing, you urchin? Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Let's keep reading. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I've decided I can't wait to marry the prince. He's just so dreamy. Out of my way, shrimp. Wow, that is so mean. She looks mad. My darling, let's go get married. Okay, my love. Things are getting a little too real. Where's Dolph and my dad? E -e 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 -e. They're here! Whoa! Whoa! Let's go! Start the wedding! We're gathered today, whoa, to join this, whoa! Skip to the end. Do you, wait, what's your name? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Keep going. Do you, whatever, it doesn't matter. Keep going. Take this man, Prince Jeff, to be. I do. Prince Jeff, do you? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Don't worry, we got this. You, you're doing this. I was gonna play fair, but I changed my mind. Ah, watch out! You'll have to go through me first. No problem. Ah! Mmm, <laughs> tastes like chicken. Ah, what happened? The evil sea witch's spell is broken. Hey, that guy has a tail. Uh-oh. What's going on? Really long story. Hey, talking dolphin. Uh, I should go. And look, she's a mermaid. Uh, uh-oh. Wait a minute, it's you. It is. <laughs> you can talk. I can. <laughs> and you're a real mermaid. Yeah. Very cool. Jeff, are you okay? Absolutely. I told you mermaids were real. Oh, so cute. 
Six months later. So everything was working out great. The sea witch was defeated and her spells were broken. I didn't turn into a gross sea urchin and my dad and Dolph weren't turned into jellyfish. Yay! <laughs> Esmeralda admitted she didn't want to get married anyway. Convenient. <laughs> and Prince Jeff finally found his mermaid. Moi. <laughs> and best of all, after lots of begging and explaining, my dad and Prince Jeff's parents agreed that it would be okay if he and I went on a real date. So far, so good. And by the way, um, milkshakes are delicious. <laughs> hey, wanna hear me sing? Of course. <laughs> Aw, happily ever after. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time, bye. Hi kids, welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading Sleeping Beauty. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time in an enchanted land far, far away, there lived a king and a queen. One day, after many, many years of hoping for a baby, the king and queen had a little baby girl, a princess named Briar Rose. Everyone in the land was so excited about the new baby princess, especially the fairies. You see, fairies love babies. Aw, that's so sweet. So the fairies all got together to plan a party to celebrate little Briar Rose. Fairies also love parties. <laughs> Ooh, I love the streamers, Twinkles. Thanks, boss. And Sparkle, those cupcakes look scrumptious. Buttercup, how is the music coming? Great, I've almost got the speakers set up. Speakers work. Excellent. Everything was shaping up for a wonderful party. Well, all except for one teeny tiny detail that everyone overlooked, no one had invited Grimsley. Grimsley was not like the other fairies. The other fairies liked to flit and flutter about, singing sweet songs and sprinkling pixie glitter on everything. And Grimsley, well, Grimsley liked to do sort of mischievous things like gluing fairies' wings together. We're stuck! And filling the pixie glitter jars with dirt. And she absolutely loved to put curses on the other fairies. Curse you! I turn you into a frog! Hey! Wow, that is so mean. Grimsley just wasn't very nice. Maybe that's why it never occurred to any of the other fairies to invite her. Anyway, the party started out like any other fairy party. It was lots of fun and everyone was happy until... What? I just came to bring a present for the baby. Oh, how lovely, thank you. The king and queen opened Grimsley's present, but they were confused. What is this, a spindle? Briar Rose is far too young to play with a spindle. See kids, a spindle is a sharp, pointy thing used to make yarn. So not exactly a good gift for a baby. But then Grimsley said, You didn't read the card. It explains the curse. A curse? Oh no. This is gibberish. It says here that when Briar Rose turns 16, she'll prick her finger on a spindle and fall into a hundred years sleep. The only thing that will wake her is true love. And good luck with that. Hard to find love when you're nothing. What did she say? She just put a curse on Briar Rose. A purse? A curse. Oh no, curses are bad. That's right kids, curses are bad, especially when they're from an angry fairy. Grimsley flew away, but the damage was done. Everyone was majorly bummed out. The next day, the king and queen banned Grimsley from the kingdom and ordered that all spindles be thrown away. This is a no spindle zone, no spindles. And it remained a no spindle zone for exactly 16 years. And then one day, a nearly grown up Briar Rose went exploring around the castle. <laughs> know about this. What you doing? I'm spinning. <laughs> really? This is how I spin. Uh, whoa. Uh, <laughs> uh, makes me dizzy though. <laughs> I'm spinning yarn. Then I'll make you a pretty dress. Oh, that's so nice of you. Hey, I've never seen you around here before. Are you new? I've been around for years, but no one visits me much. Oh, well, now that I know you're here, I'll come and visit you every day. <laughs> hey, could I try? Ooh, I poked myself. Ugh, it's not too bad, though. 
belly hurts a little bit. Too bad. She was actually kind of sweet. Oh well. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. What? No! That can't be! Briar Rose had fallen into a deep sleep. Oh no, just like the curse said she would. When she didn't show up for dinner, the king and queen began to worry. Everyone went looking for her. Briar Rose! Briar Rose, where are you? When they found her sleeping, the spindle beside her, they all knew that Grimsley was to blame. The king and queen were so upset, but Grand Fairy, the oldest and wisest of all the fairies, had an idea. I can cast a spell that will make everyone in the castle fall asleep and only wake when the princess wakes. Then it will be as if no time has passed at all. The king and queen agreed to it. Grand Fairy summoned all the magic she could, and with a wave of her fairy wand, everyone fell asleep. Yay, magic to the rescue. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Yep, still sleeping. And they slept and slept and slept. Nothing could wake them up. Over the years, the trees grew around the castle like a jungle, and eventually people kind of just forgot that it had ever even existed. But inside the castle, Briar Rose looked exactly as she did the day she fell asleep. Luckily, Grimsley hadn't cursed her dreams, and Briar Rose had plenty of sweet dreams. One time, she dreamed she lived in a land of puppies, just puppies everywhere for as far as the eye could see. Oh, so cute. Puppies! <laughs> and then another time, the puppies were replaced by kittens. <gasps> kittens! <laughs> Actually, there were lots of dreams like that. Puppies, kittens, ponies, unicorns, hamsters, unicorn hamsters. Pretty much anything cute slash awesome and Briar Rose dreamt about it. But Briar Rose's favorite dream was the one with the prince. Ah, the prince. The prince dream always started the same. Briar Rose would wake up bright and early. Then I would walk into the garden where all the birds and woodland creatures would come out to greet me. Hi, Briar Rose. Briar Rose is here. We love you, Briar Rose. I would do the usual dream stuff, like dance around and sing with the animals. But then a handsome prince arrives on horseback. That prince is so handsome. He is, of course, smitten with me and declares he is in love with me at first sight. Oh, princess, I'm in love with you at first sight. Marry me. I can't live without you. I hop onto his horse and we fly around. What? It's a dream. Horses fly in my dream. <laughs> anyway, then he whisks me away to his kingdom and we live happily ever after. <sighs> it's my favorite dream. But it was just that, a dream. Oddly enough, there was a prince from a nearby kingdom who looked a lot like the prince in Briar Rose's dream. His name was Prince John. Prince John and his brother Peter grew up hearing the legend of the sleeping princess and the true love that would save her. Everyone said her castle was somewhere deep in the woods, but no one had been able to find it. No way, I've been all through those woods. That's all just fairy tale stuff. You don't know for sure. It could be true. Yeah, right. Next you're going to tell me that fairies are real. But remember, kids, fairies are real. And they were on the lookout for a prince who might be Briar Rose's one true love. Ooh, this is so exciting. He seems like a nice boy. He doesn't even believe in fairies. No, not that one. The other one. The one who looks all dreamy-eyed whenever anyone mentions the princess. Oh, that one. Yes, he does seem nice. We have to lead him to the castle. Then he'll find Briar Rose. And somehow, they'll fall in love. Haven't figured that part out yet. Maybe we could just sprinkle him with some pixie glitter. Did you hear something? Huh? Gazoontite. Could have sworn I heard a tiny sneeze. Heh, <laughs> it was probably the fairies. Oh look, he's handsome too. Let's go tell Grand Fairy and Sparkle that we found the perfect prince. Twinkles and Buttercup flew back towards the castle, excited to tell the other good fairies that they had found a prince for Briar Rose. But they were suddenly stopped in their tracks. Uh, watch out! Hello, Stinkle, Butterpoop. What's up? It's Twinkles! And Buttercup! What are you doing here, Grimsley? You were banned! 
Yes, but the king and queen who banned me are fast asleep. What are they gonna do? Snore me to death? Well, they're gonna be awake soon because we found a charming young prince to come break the curse. Yeah, we're gonna tell Granberry and Sparkle right now! You are, huh? It'd be a shame if you couldn't do that. What do you mean? What's the matter? Mean fairy got your tongue? <laughs> okay, have fun with that. See ya! And I will see ya. Because there is no way I'm going to let you break my curse and spoil all my fun! Ooh, I didn't see that coming. Let's keep reading. Chapter 3, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! First, let's check on Briar Rose. Still sleeping. Buttercup and Twinkles thought that they had discovered the perfect match for Briar Rose when they found Prince John. But after Grimsley's curse, they couldn't speak. So how were they gonna tell Grand Fairy and Sparkles? What would you do if you were there? Oh, I love charades! A bird! A plane! Superman? I think they're trying to say that a bird attacked them. Why don't you just write it down? None of us know how to read or write. Oh, right. I don't teach that at fairy school. How about drawing? Can you guys draw out what you're trying to say? Grimsley casting a spell and they can't talk. Oh, Grimsley cursed you and took your voices. But why? Because they fell in love with a prince. Huh? Oh, oh, I know. They found the prince to break the spell. And then Grimsley must have found out and cursed them so they couldn't tell anyone. Now tell us how to find that prince. Buttercup and Twinkles drew out directions on how to get to the prince's castle, and Grand Fairy and Sparkle set out to find him. Yay, I'm so happy. Let's check on Briar Rose again and see how things are going with her. Still snoozing away. <laughs> Let's see what she's dreaming about. Ah, it's the one about the prince. Really looks like true love, doesn't it? But wait, what's that? It's the bad fairy Grimsley. Oh no, that's not good. We only want Briar Rose to have sweet dreams. Well, let's get back to the story. When Grand Fairy and Sparkle got to the castle, they scooped it out detective style. Got him! Let's go! Remember, try not to scare him. Got it! Hi! <laughs> oh no! He's out cold. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Hey, just like Briar Rose. She's sleeping, he's sleeping. Smash me to heaven. Hello, Prince. Wake up. Oh, Prince. Here, allow me. Hey, wake up. Uh. Don't be scared. We're fairies, and we've come to tell you about your true love. Huh? But what the good fairies didn't know, boys and girls, is that they were talking to the wrong prince, Prince Peter. Ugh. The right prince, Prince John, was far away. See, Grimsley had beaten Good Fairy and Sparkle to the castle and captured Prince John. That's right, kids. Grimsley would stop at nothing to foil the Good Fairy's effort to break her spell. What? No, that can't be. Where am I? You're in the Enchanted Kingdom, the land of magic and fairies. And who are you? I'm Grimsley, the greatest fairy of them all. Oh, very impressive. And why am I tied up? Well, I may as well tell you. You are supposed to fall in love with a princess named Briar Rose, AKA Sleeping Beauty. I am? Yes, but she's cursed to sleep for 100 years, and I can't have you going to break the curse. Wait, are you talking about the Sleeping Beauty? I knew she was real. But wait, why don't you want me to break the curse? I don't want you to break the curse because I'm the one who cursed her. But why did you curse her? Because I'm a bad fairy and that's what I do. Now zip it before I curse you too. Prince John had so many more questions, but he decided he'd better do as Grimsley said and zip it. He soon fell asleep and had a dream, a very sweet dream about a lovely princess. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Prince John had fallen asleep and was dreaming of a princess. It was just a dream, but it felt so real. So real that when he woke up, he was 
very disappointed to find that he was still tied up at Grimsley's. The good news was the bad fairy was nowhere to be seen. Prince John knew that this was his chance. I have to escape. <clears throat> huh, that was easy. Yeah, fun fact, fairies are terrible at tying knots. That's why they never wear shoes with any laces. Oh, now I get it. Once he was untied, Prince John hightailed it out of there, but he quickly found out he had no idea where he was or where he should go. Meanwhile, Briar was still in her deep sleep, dreaming a sweet dream about her prince. Ah, her dashing prince. But then something weird happened. Her prince suddenly changed into someone else. Another prince. But this prince was all wrong. He said, no, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Huh? That part wasn't a dream. You see, Grand Fairy and Sparkle had brought Prince Peter to see Briar Rose. They thought he would take one look at Briar Rose and realize he was madly in love with her. But he just saw a sleeping princess with a little bit of drool on her cheek. They asked him, So, are you in love? And Prince Peter replied, You guessed it. No, I don't think this is true love. Sorry. Are you sure? Yeah, no. Why did you think we'd be in love anyway? She's cursing to a deep sleep, and only your true love can wake her up. We thought that might be you. Whoa, this is the legendary Sleeping Beauty. My brother is always going on and on and on about her. It's like he's in love with her or something. Wait, hold up. You have a brother? Yeah. That must be who Twinkles and Buttercup saw. Where is he? I don't know. I saw him leaving with some little lady. Hey, come to think of it, she had wings just like you guys. Grimsley! We have to go rescue that prince! Let's go! Okay, I guess I'll just see myself out. <laughs> that was so funny. The good fairies set off to find Grimsley's hideout, but they wouldn't find Prince John there. He was wandering the enchanted forest, trying to get to Sleeping Beauty's castle. It must be around here somewhere. Prince John was determined to find Briar Rose. He trudged through the mud. He swam through alligator-infested waters. He leapt over pits of snakes. Nothing could stop him. That is, until he got to a very large, very tall brick wall covered in vines. Whoa, that is one big wall. Whatever, I'll just climb up the vines. Ow, 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 ow. You see, the wall was covered in rose vines and prickly thorns, otherwise known as... <gasps> briars. That's right, kids. Thorny bushes are also known as briars. Prince John wondered if this might be significant. Hey, briars, roses, briar rose. I bet briar rose is on the other side of this wall. And she was. Only trouble was, Prince John would have to climb over the very ouchy wall of thorny briars. But he was determined. The fate of true love kept him going strong. Ah, true love. Ow, ow, ooh, ouch, ooh, ow. About a hundred owls later, and Prince John was at the top of the wall. <gasps> Is this Sleeping Beauty's castle? Wait, what's that noise? That sounds like snoring. This is it. I made it. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm okay. Time to go break the spell. Looks like we're on our way to a happy ending, kids. But wouldn't you know it, trouble was a Bruin in another part of the enchanted forest. Grand Fairy and Sparkle had just made it to Grimsley's hideout and found a very angry Grimsley. And kids, when fairies get angry, watch out. You! You did this! Did what? Released my prisoner! Oh, you mean Briar Rose is one true love? We did it! That looks like he's on his way to break the spell, doesn't it? Not if I get there first! And Grimsley shot out like a cannon! What do you think she's gonna do? I don't know, but we better stop her! Oh, uh, not again! The good fairies knew that they had to stop Grimsley. It was a race against time, good versus evil, but love must prevail. Whoa, that was scary. Let's keep reading. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Prince John had just made it to the sleeping castle. Now, let's go save the princess. Prince John wandered the castle looking for Briar Rose's room, which as it turns out, wasn't too difficult. Well, that was easy. <laughs> All right. Prince John opened the door. 
I'd imagine something like this happen next. My prince, my one true love. Marry me. Oh, so cute. But what really happened is this. Uh, hey, Brian Rose. Um, I think I'm supposed to wake you up. I mean, I don't mean to sound presumptuous or anything, but I might be your true love. It's destiny or something. Um, I guess I'll wait here until you wake up. I'm sorry. This is really awkward. I I'm just going to wait outside. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> that was so funny. <gasps> what was that? Sorry, uh, I just fell. <laughs> Briar Rose, you're awake. You're... <gasps> you're my prince from the dreams. Huh? You dreamed of me? Yeah. Wait, am I awake or is this another dream? Oh, please, please, pretty, please tell me I'm really awake. You're really awake. And she was. Sleeping Beauty was no longer sleeping. Her true love had awakened her by being clumsy and noisy. How romantic. Yay, I'm so happy. Woohoo! <laughs> Wait, what year is it? How long was I out for? Did you hear me snoring? Oh gosh, do I have drool on my face? Please tell me I don't have drool on my face. All good. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, you broke the spell, huh? <laughs> yes, I'm apparently your one true love. I mean, if it's okay with you. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I already know everything about you. This is so weird, <laughs> but cool. But just as the two lovebirds were getting to know each other, they heard a very odd noise. What is that? It sounds like an airplane. Okay, but what is that? Oh, <laughs> I, I guess those were invented after you were cursed. It's a thing you can fly around in. Oh, what? Cool! Wait, how long was I asleep? Like, almost a full hundred years. Wow, that is so cool. So I'm really, like, over a hundred years old? <laughs> is my hair gray? No, it's brown. Um, <laughs> I think we should be more focused on that noise, because it sounds like it's coming right this way. I'm okay. Oh, hello, Briar Rose. You're up. Who are you? It's the bad fairy. We have to run. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, my legs are asleep. I can't move. Uh, watch out. I am Grimsley, the greatest fairy of evil, and I curse you. But before she could finish her curse, Briar Rose said, Pull me out of here. Hey, where'd they go? Once they got out of the castle, Briar Rose tried to wake up the rest of her body. Better? Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. Because <laughs> it's time to run. Where are we going to go? I don't know. But wherever they ran, Grimsley was going to follow. And she was working up her worst curse yet. A curse? Oh, no. Let's keep reading. Chapter 6. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Briar Rose and Prince John were on the run from the bad fairy Grimsley. Only problem was they didn't know where to go. So they kind of just ran around freaking out. <sighs> Meanwhile, since the 100 years of sleeping spell had been broken, the rest of the castle was waking up. We're awake. Hurrah! But the hurrahs stopped when they found that Briar Rose was not in her room. Where's the princess? <gasps> The princess is missing. That's when, rather conveniently, the good fairies arrived. Grand Fairy and Sparkle were exhausted from flying all over, trying to undo Grimsley's mischief. But they had a job to do, and good fairies never give up. Aw, that is so nice. So, we have some good news and some bad news. Good news is the spell has been broken! Yay! But the bad news... What are they doing? Grimsley cursed them and took their voices. They're trying to tell you the bad news. Which is that Grimsley is planning another curse. And we're not sure what she's going to do. But it's probably very, very, very bad. Oh no, she must have taken Briar Rose. Don't worry, we'll find her. Let's go, gang. Back in the forest, Briar Rose and Prince John had found what they thought was a great hiding spot. Let's just hang out here for a bit and maybe Grimsley will just give up and leave. But that proved to be wishful thinking because guess who showed up? Oh no, run! Hey guys, what's up? Are we playing hide and seek? 
Yep, Grimsley had found them. Not good. Hmm, let's see. What sort of evil spell should I cast? I could turn you into frog. That's always fun. Oh, or how about I turn Briar Rose into a frog and Prince John into a fly? And then Briar the frog will mm. eat John the fly. <laughs> what do you say? Uh, no thanks. Oh, I could turn you into donkeys. Have people, have horse, maybe turn you into statues? Oh, I know. I won't turn you into anything at all. You won't? No. I'll turn myself into... A dragon? Ah, this is scary. What are we gonna do? Uh, I don't know, run? Okay, maybe not. Fortunately, help was on the way. The good fairies were flying at top speed on the hunt for Grimsley, ready to stop her in her evil tracks. Uh-oh! Uh, what's our plan again? Find Grimsley and trap her in this bag. Yeah, I think we'll need a bigger bag. I have an idea. Follow me. The good fairies flew right at Grimsley's face. You know, the one that was breathing fire at everyone? Usually not a good idea, but... Pixie Glitter, now! Hey, get out of here! I can't see! Ow! I burned myself! Well, maybe you should stop breathing fire! Never! Ow! Ha! You're in trouble, villain! Give it up, Grimsley! Yeah, Prince John and Briar Rose have true love. They broke the spell. Yeah, love wins. This was like a poison to Grimsley. Bad fairies do not like love. Ugh, gross. Don't invite me to the wedding. Don't worry, you're not going anywhere. Except fairy jail. Is that a thing? We'll figure it out. The important thing was that the day was saved. Grimsley was defeated and forced to undo all her evil spells. Twinkles and Buttercup got their voices back and the Enchanted Kingdom was awake and happy. Normally, we'd say that this was a happy ending, but since Briar Rose and John only just met, let's call this one a happy beginning. That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Good morning. Good morning! How long have you guys been there? Not long! You drool when you sleep. We're just so excited! We've never had a princess for a roommate, or any roommate at all, except for all of us, of course, and we used to have a dog. Does that count? I think so. Do you want breakfast? Snacky made pancakes! They're shaped like animals! They're the best! You're so perky for so early in the morning. <laughs> What's your name? Kitty! Cute! Hi there! It's time for story time at Cool School. I'm Miss Booksy. Today we're reading Snow White. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Well, that's my nickname. My real name is Margaret Katrine Simone Anna von Kluster Stadenstank. Yeah, so most people just called her Snow White and pretty much everyone agreed that Snow White was the coolest girl around. She was funny. And then I said, that's not a yo-yo, it's a chicken. <laughs> She was smart, A-N-I-S-M, and that's how you spell anti-disestablishmentarianism. And best of all, she was kind to every creature on Earth. Oh, that is so nice. She was even kind to her stepmother, Katrine Francesca Karina Amelia Anastasia von Kleschberg-Dottenstonk, but you can call her the Evil Queen for short. As you might guess, the Evil Queen was not nice at all. It's like she only cares about herself. Yes, that was the problem. The queen did not care for anyone other than herself, and she cared for herself way too much. She even traveled all the way to Grim Forest, where the witches live, just to buy a magic mirror that would tell her how great she was. Oh, that's so not cool. This one is real nice. It'll tell you how wonderful you are. Error, error. Oh! Never mind, that one's no good. Okay, now this magic mirror is top of the line. You're gonna love it. Honestly, I'm getting some mean vibes from you. Ugh, 
Next. Uh, okay, uh, this one. This is a great magic mirror. Go ahead, ask it. Excuse me, Mr. Mirror. No, 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 no. You gotta say mirror, mirror on the wall. It likes that. All right. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You are my queen. You are the most amazing person of all. You're the best. Aha, I'll take it. Oh man, Snow White's stepmother loved that mirror. She would ask it like a dozen times a day if she was still the most amazing person in all the land. Will you pass the gravy, please? Hold on, hold on. Mirror, mirror on the wall. It's your turn. Yes, yes, one moment. Mirror, mirror on the wall. This again. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who I'm is trying the to sleep. So yeah, the mirror was pretty annoying. The queen loved giving Snow White chores, as evil queens tend to do. So one day she was cleaning the evil queen's bedroom. She was just about finished when she noticed some schmutz on the magic mirror. I'm definitely not allowed to touch the mirror, but she did say the room had better be spotless. I'd hate to make her mad. Snow White reached out to dust the mirror and... <gasps> it's you! What? You are the most amazing person in the land! Why, thank you, but don't say that. The queen will get, like, really mad. Ugh, she is so mean. But I can see that you have a good heart. <laughs> are you actually just an x-ray machine? <laughs> no, I mean you have a good soul. Aw, that's so sweet. The queen has a rotten soul, by the way. Well, thanks for the compliment, but you really must keep telling her that she's the best. It's dangerous to make her mad. Promise? Okay. Long story short, the mirror did not keep his promise for long. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most amazing person of all? You, my lady, are an amazing person. Of all? Yeah, sure, of all. Say it then, say the whole thing. Uh, I meant to say that you, my queen, are the most amazing person of all? Good, just checking. Uh... What was that? Nothing, nothing, nothing. It sounded like something. It's just that Snow White may be more amazing. But the queen didn't scream or break things, and she didn't cry. She was just very quiet. That's not good, kids. When the evil queen gets quiet, it means she's really, 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 really mad. And like Snow White said, that can be very dangerous. This is kind of spooky. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Yep, she looks pretty mad. I will get rid of Snow White. That sounds bad. Poor Snow White, she didn't do anything. Yeah, I was just minding my own business. The evil queen tried all kinds of different ways to get rid of the princess. She locked me out. Ugh, she tried to mail me to Alaska. She even tried to send me away in a hot air balloon. Wow, that is so mean. You might be wondering why my dad didn't step in and do anything. Well, he was away on king business at the semi-annual royal symposium. That's where natural born kings and queens go to learn royal stuff, like how to balance giant crowns on their heads and how to wave at a parade. So I was on my own. The queen was getting frustrated. She couldn't get rid of Snow White. She finally decided to go back to the witches of the grim forest. Surely they could get the job done. Oh, it's you again. Welcome back. I need a curse to get rid of a princess. Oh, goody. I just love those curses. What do you need? A hundred years sleep? Make her lose her singing voice? Ooh, maybe we turn her into a frog. I just want her to go away forever. Ooh, I see. A one-way ticket. Exactly. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Well, my sister is a travel agent. We can send her to China. I was thinking something a little more permanent. Okay, okay. Well, how about a classic deatomizer? What is that? I don't know, but it sounds cool, right? Can't you just do something, I don't know, witchy? Oh, sure, that's easy. Here's what you need. A bubbling cauldron, a rose, Ouch! watch out for the thorns, the tooth of the shark, eee! 
eat? A rotten egg. Gross. A picture of Santa Claus. Um, random. And a lock of Snow White's hair. And check. Mix it all together and say these words. Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? Mecca like a ding dong, cherry chicken ping pong, Snow White, why don't you just disappear already? And just like that, Snow White disappeared. Didn't think it would work, did you? Yeah, neither did I. Oh no, I hope she's okay. But here's the thing, boys and girls. People don't really disappear. They just appear somewhere else. And that's what happened to Snow White. She appeared in another fairy tale. Whoa, where am I? This isn't our kingdom. Hey, I think that's Cinderella. How'd I get into her storyline? Oh, maybe her fairy godmother can help me get home. Did somebody say fairy godmother? I did. Do you want to go to the ball too? I can let you go. But you can't win the heart of the prince. I already promised that to my goddaughter, Cinderella. That's okay, I don't need a prince. I just want to go home. Oh, gotcha. And with a wave of her wand, Cinderella's fairy godmother sends Snow White back home. Whoa. Yay, magic to the rescue. And at the very same moment, the evil queen was asking the magic mirror if she was the most amazing person in all the land. Uh. No, it's still Snow White. What? I got rid of her. It should be me. This is awkward. Oh, I'll get her. And this time, I'll make sure she never comes back. I've got a wicked good plan. <laughs> I think you have something in your teeth. Oh, be quiet. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Let's keep reading. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The evil queen had just discovered that Snow White was back and she was not happy. For revenge, she gave Snow White an endless list of chores to do. I had to clip her toenails. Ugh. I had to brush her cat's teeth. And as always, I had to clean her room, which she had left super messy on purpose. I mean, really, who leaves a half a meatloaf under the bed? Gross. Wow, that is so mean. Hey there. How's it going? Oh, you scared me. Sorry. I hope the queen's not being too mean. She's a real piece of work. Yeah. You think deep down maybe she's actually nice? Uh, I don't think so. She's pretty bad. I bet she was a really nice kid. And then something terrible happened, like a wizard cast a spell on her that made her bad. Not exactly. Or maybe she was attacked by a two-headed fire-breathing dragon and she just hasn't been the same since. Or, or, or maybe she was tricked by a boy who said he was a charming prince but then he turned out to be a scaly lizard. And ever since then, she's just too sad to be nice. Um, nope, I don't think so. Surely she hasn't always been evil. I'm an all-knowing mirror. Trust me, she's been bad since day one. That is so not cool. She drew angry, frowny faces on all her sister's dolls. She cut her brother's hair, and not in a good way. She scribbled all over her family photos. She even put mustard in her mom's shampoo bottle. Yes, indeed. She is one bad apple. Well, if she's always been bad, then how come my dad wanted to marry her? She tricked him. Before your soon-to-be stepmother moved to town, she paid a little visit to the witches in the Grim Forest. Welcome to ye old witchcraft and novelty shop. What can I do for ya? I want to be queen. Hmm, I don't have any crowns, but I could sell you this t-shirt that says, I'm the queen, gotta love me. <gasps> That's it! I need to make the king fall in love with me. I need a potion, a love potion. Ooh, good idea. The witch sold her a magic love potion that would make a guy fall totally head over heels in love with her. Whoa, I'm totally head over heels in love with you. Will you marry me? Oh, now I get it. Unfortunately, that was my dad. And that's how she became the queen. And worst of all, my stepmother. Even back then, she didn't like me. Ugh. Seriously, who doesn't like babies? Hey. Do you think the spell could be broken? That would take some very serious magic. Even the witches of the Grim Forest have trouble reversing spells. Wait, she's coming. How do you know? 
How many times do I have to tell you? I'm an all-knowing mirror. I know everything. Did I hear you talking to someone? Yeah, um, I, 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 I talk to myself when I'm cleaning. <laughs> really? What about? Well, I was just talking to myself about the weather. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, I, I guess so. Now get back to work. Whew, that was a close one. That was close. Yeah, if she catches me talking to you, she'll lose it. <gasps> Uh-oh. What? Uh-oh is right, kids. The evil queen was listening at the door. Total fake out. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Tomorrow I'm sending you to the Grim Forest to return this defective mirror. I'm sure you'll both have a lovely time. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Wake up. What time is it? It's time to go to the Grim Forest. <laughs> he is the mirror. What happened to it? It's all smashed. See, I told you it was defective. See ya. She'll find her way into the forest, but she'll never find her way out. <laughs> what? No, that can't be. Okay, this is only extremely very scary. No big deal. <laughs> I wish the queen hadn't busted the mirror. He would be good company about now. Ugh, and these directions. Walk backwards down the dragon's path? Make a left at the gargoyles. A backwards left or a frontwards left? It's that way. Thanks. Then turn around three times at the troll's bridge. Hey there, my sweet. Ah, this is scary. I'm not your sweet, you troll. Sorry, I don't get out much. Then hop on one foot. Why? Hop on one foot past the Wicked War's warehouse. And so the wishes shop should be? Yoo-hoo, right here. You looking for me? Yeah, how'd you know? Oh, just witches intuition. That means I'm a really good guesser. Come inside. So my stepmom wants to return this mirror. Oh, this mirror is very smart. Top of the line, or at least it was. Yeah, I think the queen had a temper tantrum. <laughs> I remember her. Ugh, she's a doozy. Tell me about it. <laughs> this mirror was perfect for her. He knows when to tell a little white lie. Oh, like telling her she's the most amazing in the land? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a fib if I ever heard one. Hey, think we could just fix the mirror? I was starting to like him and I have a feeling I'm gonna need his all-knowing powers. <laughs> all-knowing is good. We'll just put a new face on him, new frame, and boom, looks brand new. <gasps> That's amazing. Awesome. Need anything else? Snake tooth, lucky pigtail, lotto tickets? Actually, can you reverse a love spell? No way, I don't mess with love spells anymore. Legal reasons. Snow White said goodbye to the witch and began her journey out of the Grim Forest. Why, hello there. Hi. <laughs> Maybe the Grim Forest isn't so bad. Okay, so to get back, I just have to reverse the directions. Hey, where's the Wicked Wart's warehouse? Or the troll bridge. It's getting dark and I'm lost. Wait, I know. The mirror will know how to get out. Um, hello, Mr. Mirror? Where's the on switch? Snow White tried everything she could think of to get the mirror to work. She tried voice command. Mirror, activate. She tried shaking it. She tried smacking it. Finally, she tried yelling at no one in particular. Why? Um, excuse me, ma'am. Ah! Sorry, didn't mean to frighten you. Are you okay? I'm lost, and it's dark, and this mirror is supposed to know everything, and it won't turn on. And I'm hungry, and I'm scared, and... Wait, who are you? I'm the professor. You must be smart. Do you know the way out of this forest? I need to get back to my kingdom. Yep, follow me. 
Okay. The professor led Snow White out of the grim forest, past the Wicked Ward's warehouse, the Troll Bridge, the Gargoyles, the Dragon's Path, all the way to where Snow White had began. Thank you so much, Professor. <laughs> You're welcome. I hope to see you again one day. Aw, that is so nice. I don't know if I'll be going back into the Grim Forest anytime soon, but if I do, I'll look for ya. They said their goodbyes, and Snow White went inside the palace to give her stepmother the mirror. You're back? I mean, um, you're, you're back. How lovely. And I brought you a new mirror. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it on, though. It needs batteries. Duh. Oh. <laughs> well, good night. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most amazing person of all? You better say me. It's you, my queen. Hmm, you sound the same as my old mirror, the one I destroyed. All magic mirrors have this voice now. It's factory issue. Don't worry, my queen. That old mirror is history. Did you just wink? Uh, no, just something in my eye. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The queen was not happy with Snow White's return. Hi, I'm Snow White and I'm so cool. Blech, it's time to get rid of her once and for all. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Uh-oh. What did you say? I said, uh-oh, because, um, I haven't told you how awesome you look today, have I? Silly me. You look good, girlfriend. Oh, thank you. There you go, Mr. Squirrel. Keep the cast on for six weeks. And don't get it wet. <laughs> He's totally gonna get it wet. Hey there, Snow White. Let's pause for a second. That was Shep Huntsman. A lot of people just called him the Huntsman because he was actually the official hunter for the king. Okay, let's continue with the story. Hi, Shep. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> oh, you know, just hanging out. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, let's pause again. Snow White had a little bit of a crush on the Huntsman. Oh, so cute. What? He's really nice and he taught me all kinds of wilderness survival skills. He taught me how to call a turkey. Hello, can I please speak to Mr. Turkey? No, like this. <laughs> and how to make s'mores. Are they done yet? Are they done yet? Are they done yet? He even taught me what to do if I encountered an angry fire-breathing dragon. <gasps> Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? It's you, it's you all. Oh. Anyway, what I mean is he's just cool, <laughs> whatever. So, how's it going? Oh, wait, I already asked you that, didn't I? Yoo-hoo, Huntsman boy, I need to speak to you. Okay, your highness, be right there. No, now. I mean, please. <laughs> you better go, she's been super testy lately. Okay, see you later. See ya. <laughs> Huntsman boy, I need you to do a job for me. Sure, your highness. I need you to take Snow White out. On a date? A date with her? Ugh, you have no taste. No, I need you to take Snow White deep into the forest and sell her to the wizard. I don't get it. There's nothing to get. You take her into the woods, you sell her to the weird wizard who will turn her into a frog or something, and then you bring me the money. Oh no. Why do you want the wizard to turn her into a frog? I don't care if it's a frog or a rock or a bobblehead toy. I just want her gone! I don't think I can do this. It's not nice. Ugh. If you don't do it, I will. And trust me, that's much worse for pretty little Snow White. Why? She's so sweet. That's exactly why. Now run along. You have work to do. This is bad. I mean, you look rad. The huntsman was very upset. He went down to sit by the koi pond. That's where he liked to do his serious thinking. I really like Snow White. I couldn't do anything to hurt her. What am I supposed to do? What would you do if you were there? Meanwhile, Snow White went upstairs to do her chores and talk to her friend, the mirror. Hey, how are ya? The queen is making the huntsman take you out. On a date? No! Out in the forest where he's gonna sell you to the wizard! The wizard? He turns people into frogs! Wait, 
Chef Huntsman would never do that to me. The queen said, if he doesn't, she'll do worse. I think you should run away from the kingdom. This is my home. I'm the princess. It's not safe for you here. You'll find happiness in the forest. Trust me. Snow White knew the mirror wouldn't lie to her, so she went to her room to pack all her prized possessions. Why won't you fit? <sighs> You're probably better off here anyway, Teddy. I'll miss you. And I'll miss you too, Lamb. And I'll miss you, dollhouse, with a real elevator and a tiny ice cream machine. And you, my beautiful dresses. I'm going to miss being a princess, but I will be brave. And I will go out into the forest, and I will survive. One day, I will return. Not as a princess, but as a queen. Snap girl, that was fierce. And so Snow White set off to find the huntsman and begin their journey. She was ready for her new adventure. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Snow White and the Huntsman set off for their journey into the Grim Forest. It was a little awkward for a few reasons. One, she totally knew he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. Two, he didn't know that she knew that he was supposed to sell her to the wizard. And he was nervous. And three, they were always a little awkward around each other anyway, because that's just how it is sometimes, when you kind of like somebody and you hope they like you back. So, uh, the sky is blue. Uh, uh I mean, a uh, nice day, right? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect day for a stroll. Yeah, just a nice stroll through a spooky forest. Well, that was weird. Look, I know the queen told you to get rid of me. You do? I won't sell you to the wizard, I promise. Psh, like I was gonna let you. What are we gonna do? I packed some basic survival items. Jerky, trail mix, water, jelly beans, first aid kit, oh, and I packed a teeny tiny teddy bear. <laughs> I couldn't get the big one to fit in my bag. I can't just leave you out here. I'll be okay. You taught me all kinds of survival skills. Why don't I stay here with you? Are you nuts? If you stay, then the queen will come looking for both of us. Yeah, that would be bad. I'll be all right. The queen's magic mirror told me so. Come visit me sometime? Of course. Here, take my camping toolkit. It's got all kinds of handy stuff, even fingernail clippers. Oh yeah, I guess there's no place for a mani-pedi out here. Whatever, I'll be fine. I better go. Don't want to make the queen mad. See ya, Snow White. See ya, Shep Huntsman. And that's how Snow White began her first day as a non-princess, stranded in the woods with a small teddy bear and a pair of fingernail clippers. Well, I better start setting up camp. As Snow White began to work on her new dwelling, the Huntsman practiced his spiel for the queen. It had to be perfect. Why, yes, your highness. I definitely sold Snow White to the wizard. He said he'd turn her into a frog in no time. Yes, ma'am. I sold her for... Oh, no! If I sold the princess, then I should have money. I don't have any money. How are they ever going to get out of this one? The huntsman checked his pockets for loose change. Nope. He looked in his sock. Nada. He checked his fanny pack where he kept important things like his Phillips head screwdriver and chewing gum. Zip. Zilch. Zero. Wait, I know. To the koi pond. That's where I toss in my coins and make wishes. I wish I could get a puppy. I wish I could fly. I wish I could grow a mustache. I wish I had a hundred wishes. There must be like a million dollars in there by now. Hey, I never did get that puppy or that mustache. That's it, I'm taking my wishes back. Meanwhile, in Grim Forest, Snow White had just finished setting up her new, um, apartment? Perfect, it's shabby chic. <laughs> oh man. Okay, third time's a charm. Excuse me, Snow White? Professor, <laughs> boy am I glad to see you. What are you doing here? I live here now. <laughs> We're neighbors. Great, there goes the neighborhood. Who's your friend? That's Sassy McSassy Pants. That's your name? I love it. <laughs> OMG, I love it. My real name is Sasper. It's short for exasperation. No, it isn't. Snow White, you can't live out here like this. Oh, sure I can. I'm not a princess anymore. I'm just a regular girl. Regular girls don't live under a pile of sticks in Grim Forest. Come on, you're moving in with us. No. Hush, Sasper. Oh, I shouldn't intrude. 
No, she shouldn't. Nonsense. Let's go. Snow White grabbed her bag and followed the professor and Sasper to their little cottage in the woods. She was so excited. I've never had roommates before. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun. Back at the kingdom, the huntsman had just gathered enough coins and was off to see the queen. Your majesty. Why are you all wet? Uh, it's raining. Uh, in the woods. It was raining in the woods. Anyway, here's your money. You sold Snow White to the wizard? Yup. He said he was definitely going to turn her into a frog. A frog? Are you sure? Yes, ma'am. You'll never see Snow White again. Well, you might see her as a frog, but it would be hard to tell it's her. Unless maybe she's wearing little yellow frog pants or something. How cute! Now please leave. Okay, your highness. See you later. Now, Muir, tell me, who is the most awesome and wonderful and dazzling person in all the land? Why, it's you, my queen. Obviously. Who else would it be? Snow White? Please, give me a break. As if. Psst. Okay, that's enough. Don't overdo it. <laughs> that was so funny. That night, everyone went to bed feeling pretty happy. The huntsman was glad he didn't have to sell Snow White to the bad wizard. The queen felt confident that she was the best thing since sliced bread. And Snow White was excited to start this new chapter in her life with her new cool roommates. I'm gonna need a bigger bed. Wow, that was so much fun. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Good morning. Good morning. How long have you guys been there? Not long. You drool when you sleep. We're just so excited. We've never had a princess for a roommate, or any roommate at all, except for all of us, of course. And we used to have a dog. Does that count? I think so. Do you want breakfast? Snacky made pancakes. They're shaped like animals. They're the best. You're so perky for so early in the morning. <laughs> What's your name? Kitty. Cute. You fell asleep as soon as you walked in the door yesterday. They didn't get a chance to introduce themselves. I was pooped. <laughs> Leaving your kingdom and roughing it in the woods is exhausting. <laughs> okay, let's do names. Of course I know you, Professor. <laughs> and now you know me and Sassy. I'm Snacky. He's the one who makes the pancakes. I'm the one who makes everything around here. Any favorite foods? Yes. I like corn on the cob and white cheddar cheese puffs and snow cones and club sandwiches. Oh, hold the mayo though. <laughs> Got it. And sloppy. I see. <laughs> I'm clumsy. That's just my nickname, though. I'm actually quite graceful. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> Those dwarves are so funny. Is that everyone? Don't forget me. I'm Tony. Hi. <laughs> well, I'm pleased to meet all of you. So, what do you guys do for fun around here? We work. What? Work's no fun. Unless you get to work in an amusement park. <laughs> That's probably fun. We work in the mines. Oh, diamond mines? No, salt. Oh, and you have fun doing that? Sure, everything's fun when you're with your best pals. What do you do for fun? I dance and sing and go to parties and play with all my animal friends and read and get in snowball fights and fly kites and ride bikes and... Well, yeah, just to name a few. <laughs> but I'll totally go to work in the mines with you guys. I'm no freeloader. You're much too big to go into the mines. Well, I'll work here then. I can clean. I used to clean my stepmother's room all the time. We're not very messy. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Right. I'm also pretty good at sewing. <gasps> I can make you guys matching outfits. That no would be thanks. amazing! Well, then let me at least make some new curtains. There's a lot of bad feng shui around here. Finally, it was settled that Snow White would spruce up the cottage in exchange for free room and board. She did other little things too, like cut their hair and make a new chef's hat for Snacky. Oh, and she changed all the light bulbs, which was a huge help. Snow White kept so busy that she didn't even have time to miss home. Actually, speaking of home, the evil queen was having a ball without Snow White around. She brought the mirror with her everywhere and showed everyone how it would say that she was the most awesome person in all the land. Ask the mirror if you're the most awesome person. Okay, okay, I'll ask. <laughs> <laughs>
Mirror, mirror, in my hand, who's the most awesome person in the land? Is it this guy? No. Is it her? Wow, that is so mean. It's you, queen. You are so awesome. Pretty rude, though, if you ask me. Hear that? I'm the most awesome person in the land. Three cheers for me. Oh, yay. Let's have a party in my honor. And I'll save my first dance for you, Mr. Huntsman. I, uh, actually can't. I'm busy. Busy? Too busy to attend a party of the queen? What are you doing that's so important? I, uh, have to wash my hair. Yeah, that's it. Okay, bye. The queen knew he was telling her a lie, but she didn't know why. She watched the huntsman from her window as he walked out of the palace and straight toward... Grim Forest? Suspicious. I'll have to follow him and find out what he's up to. Uh-oh. He better watch out. Dun, dun, dun! What was that? Nothing. The queen followed the huntsman into the woods. Who's there? What was that? Is someone there? Finally, they stopped. Hey there. Snow White! Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter 8, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The queen watched as Snow White and the huntsman talked and laughed. That rotten huntsman was supposed to get rid of her! He was supposed to take her to the wicked wizard and have her turned into a frog! How hard is that? Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Well, thanks for stopping by. Sure thing. Need anything special for next time? Yes, Snacky asked if you could bring him some marshmallows and graham crackers. We're gonna make s'mores. Awesome, will do. Bye, Snow White. Bye, Chef! And please be careful. If the queen finds out, she'll be very angry and we're done for. Yes, that would be bad, wouldn't it, princess? The queen rushed over to the witch's shop and barged right in. Hey, ever hear a knocking? This is an emergency! I need something! Something evil. Yeah, all right. The next day, Snow White had just finished her chores when a little old woman popped out of nowhere and said, you, my lady, I'm but a poor peddler woman selling shoes door to door. Shoes? Oh, I don't have much money. They're on sale. They're so pretty and just your size. You deserve a treat. Well, I guess I could just take a look. Try them on. These are beautiful. I don't think I can afford them. No, they're free. <laughs> free? Why? Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Snow White started to go after the old woman to insist on paying her, only to realize... I'm stuck. What? No, no, I'm turning to stone. Why? Help, help, help. Oh no, Snow White had become a statue from head to toe. She didn't even know what you and I know, that the old woman had really been the evil queen. Goodbye forever, Snow White. <laughs> what? No, that can't be. The queen went back to her kingdom, happy to be rid of Snow White. She marched straight towards the magic mirror. Question, why did you say I was the most awesome person in all the land when we both know you favor Snow White? But Snow White is gone, my queen. She is now. But since you're such a wise, all-knowing mirror, you must have known she's been in the grim forest all this time. Oh, see, when you said in all the land, I thought you meant around here, like in this kingdom. I didn't know you were counting grim forest. My bad. Well, it doesn't matter. She's gone forever this time, and you better watch your back. Ooh. The evil queen was also quite angry with the huntsman. She put him in jail and threw away the key. Wait, I didn't have dinner yet. Aw, oh, man. Meanwhile, back at Grim Forest, the dwarves were just coming back from work. What's that? Looks like a statue. It looks like Snow White. Cool. I want a statue that looks like me. Snow White, Snow White, come out here. There's a statue and it looks just like you. Wait, I think this is Snow White. It must be an evil curse from that evil queen. She's so evil. Oh, no. 
The dwarves were so upset, they didn't know how to reverse a curse, and they didn't know whether Snow White could think or feel in there, or if she truly was made of stone. What if she's scared? What if she gets cold? We have to move her inside. Those dwarves are so helpful. The dwarves tried with all their might, but they couldn't move Snow White. Professor, do you know any ways to reverse a spell? Well, let's see. Maybe she could kiss a frog. Here! <laughs> Why do you have a frog in your pocket? Why not? It's cute! Okay, let's reverse this spell. Maybe say some magic words! Alakazam! Abracadabra! Kalamazoo! Bless you! It's no use! We don't know magic! We could go to a witch. But the witches live in the scary part of the forest! We'll just have to be brave. Yes! We have to save our friend! The professor and Giddy set off to find a witch to reverse the spell, while the rest of the gang stood watch to guard and protect Snow White. Ah! Shoo, go away. What if we can't reverse the spell and Snow White is a statue forever? Don't worry, Tiny, we'll have a happy ending. I just know it! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Professor and Giddy were on their way to find a way to save their friend Snow White, bravely trekking through the grim forest. Ah! 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 Okay, well, at least they were trying to be brave. But hey, at least they were willing to face their fears and help a friend, right? <laughs> that was hilarious. The two finally found what they were looking for. Ye old magic shop. Hello, hi, ding, 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 ding. Ah! I mean, hello, I'm Giddy. Good for you. And I'm the professor. We need to reverse an evil spell. What kind of spell? Our friend was turned to stone! That worked? Wow. Uh, alright, I mean, uh, let's see what I have in the antidote department. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. But you're a professor, so you probably already knew that. Yes, I did. I didn't! I love learning new words! Ah, here we are. Now we just toss it in the cauldron. And... While Giddy, Professor, and the Witch mixed up the antidote, or stuff that undoes bad stuff, the evil queen was back at her castle, thinking, which is never a good thing. Snow White's turned to stone, but why don't I feel any better? I should be glowing, relaxed, happy. Mirror, do I look happy to you? Uh, you look, yeah. Look at that smile. No, this is no good. How do I know some dingbat isn't gonna stumble along and reverse the spell? I'm sure it's fine. Nope, I'm going back to take the statue. Oh no. The evil queen strikes again. Wake up guys, it's time to save Snow White. We have the antsy goat. That means stuff that undoes bad stuff. Right, Professor? Something like that, but yes. Guys, we can reverse the spell. Wait, where's Snow White? Snow White! Snow White, where are you? Guys, she's a statue. She can't answer you. Oh, right, statues can't talk. I got it, Snow White, blink twice if you can hear us. Gee, great plan. Well, if you had been guarding her, she wouldn't be lost. Me? I wasn't the only one. What about you? Oh, pretty please stop fighting. I don't like it. Giddy's right. We have to work together. It's no use. She's either been stolen. Statue net! Or maybe she came back to life and she left. No, she wouldn't just leave like that. I bet the evil queen took her. Of course. Well, we have to go find her. I love it! Okay, team name. How about the seven cool dudes? Blech. I'll consider that a yes. It was official. The seven cool dudes were on their way to save Snow White. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Well, there's the castle. Now what? We storm the gates and find Snow White. Wait, there's Snow White now. I have the witch's antidote. We'll just go up and turn her back to her old self. Hey, Professor, over here. Hey, it's the Huntsman. Why are you in jail? The queen locked me up for trying to help Snow White. I don't know what you're planning to do, but be careful. Uh-oh, we came to help Snow White. Huh? I thought Snow White was with you guys. She's here? Um, 
Oh, that's just a statue. The queen put it there to torment me. Actually, we think that's the real Snow White. No! We're not sure, but we think so. But we have a potion from a witch that could change your back. Well, what are you standing here talking to me for? Go save Snow White. But the huntsman said that just a wee bit too loudly, and yep, you guessed it. Suddenly, there was the evil queen standing right between the dwarves and Snow White. Uh-oh, they better watch out. Save Snow White? Never! We will save her! Aw, oh, you seem so upset. How sad would you be if I smashed that statue into a thousand pieces? No! no! Watch me! Okay, guys, it's time to fight back. But I'm a lover, not a fighter. Today, we're all fighters. Now let's get that evil queen. The dwarves grabbed the queen's legs and stopped her in her tracks. Get off me! Get off! Not until Snow White lives and you're gone forever! The queen tried to move forward, but it was no use. But then she spotted the witch's spell-reversing potion in the professor's hand. Give me that! No way! Got it! <laughs> now get off me! Then the professor had an idea. You want us to let go of you? Yes! Let go! Okay! Let go, guys! But luck would have it that the evil queen dropped the antidote and it fell right smack dab on Snow White's head. Woo, that was a close one. It doesn't work! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> What's everybody crying about? And why are all these pigeons on me? Shoot, birds, shoot! Snow White, you're alive! Of course I'm alive, why wouldn't I be? But wait, why am I back at the castle? And Shep, why are you in jail? The evil queen put me here. No, where is she? Over there! Owie. I'm confused. It's a long story. I'll tell it, I love long stories. I'm all ears, but first we gotta do two things. Let's bust Shep out of jail and put that bad apple in his place. Yeah! No! Sorry, majority rules, evil queen drools. <laughs> that rhymed! Once the evil queen was locked away in jail, Shep, the dwarves, and Snow White all kicked back and relaxed, happy as could be. Wait, no, there was one thing missing. Snow White, my darling daughter. Dad, that's right. Remember back in chapter two when I told you that Snow White's dad was away at the semi-annual royal symposium? You know, the place where kings and queens go to learn royal stuff. Well, he was back. Yay, I'm so happy. Dad, I missed you. Where's the queen? Long story. Oh, yippee! Let me tell it. I love long stories. Now, how's that for a happy ending? <laughs> wow, that was so much fun. I just love happy endings. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. <music> Hi, kids. Welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading Little Red Riding Hood. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, I'll take it from here. My name is Bonnie, but everyone calls me Little Red Riding Hood. I have no idea why. <laughs> anyway, my life is pretty cool, almost fairy tale like I live in a house in a small village where everyone is super friendly and nothing bad ever happens. Well, one time the market ran out of chocolate chip cookies and that was a really bad day. <laughs> but other than that, everything is thumbs up all the time. <gasps> That's amazing. <laughs> I'm pretty much friends with everyone I know, but my very best friend of all time is my grandma. <laughs> She's the sweetest, most amazing lady you'll ever meet. We do like everything together. We bake. We travel. We do arts and crafts. We go to the movies. And we just hang out. But whatever we do, it's just great to be together. <laughs> So anyway, let's get into the story. It all started when I got a call. Hello? Hello, Little Red. It's Grandma. Achoo! Gazootight, are you sick? I think so. My head is achy. My belly hurts. I've got chills and I can't get out of bed. Oh no, I hope she's okay. No, that's terrible. I'll be right over with soup and juice and medicine and ice cream. Ice cream is essential when you're sick. Alrighty, I'm all packed up to Grandma the 
this house we go. I couldn't waste any time, so I decided to take a shortcut through the woods. Even though my mom specifically said to stick to the village roads, and everything was fine. Easy breezy and honky dory, until I started to sneeze. Achoo! 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 Oh no, am I getting sick too? Uh, uh, Was that a dog? I'm allergic to dogs. That must be why I'm achoo! Sneezing. I better hurry up and get to Grandma's house. So I picked up the pace. Hello. Uh oh. She better watch out. Uh, a talking dog? No, I am a wolf. Uh oh, oh. I beg your pardon, talking wolf. Wait, a wolf? Too scary. Don't be afraid. I am a nice wolf. Okay. Would there really be such a thing as a nice wolf? I'm not so sure. Uh, uh, Bless you. Thanks. I think I'm a little bit allergic to you. Oh, no. Well, then I'll leave you. But could you spare a crumb of food for a poor old wolf? I'm hungry. Well, this stuff is for my grandma. She's sick. I'm going to her house now. Is that right? Well, I can't let you do that. <laughs> you, you can't? No, I insist. You must pick some flowers first. Oh, pick some flowers? <laughs> yes, it will cheer your grandmother up. Oh, and do you know any jokes? Jokes? Her laughter is the best medicine. You absolutely must tell her some jokes. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> I'll bring her some flowers and tell her some hilarious jokes. She'll be better in no time. Say, do you know any jokes? Oh, certainly. What do you call a lost wolf? What? A werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Uh, how about this one? Knock, knock. Who's there? Werewolf. Werewolf who? Werewolf I find in the bathroom. <laughs> how about this one? What did the wolf say when someone stepped on his foot? What? Ow! are pretty great. Thanks. My pleasure. Oh my, what big teeth you have. Oh, I hadn't noticed. Well, goodbye. And with that, the wolf bounded away into the woods. He seemed nice enough, right? Hmm, I don't know about this. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Grandma's gonna love these flowers, but I better get going. It's getting late. So I skipped ahead to Grandma's house, and again, everything was just fine until I huh? Uh, tripped. Uh, uh, huh? I'm stuck in a trap. But who would set a trap? I've only seen that wolf around here, and he seemed perfectly nice. But what I didn't know at the time, kids, was that wolf was not nice at all. In fact, he was bad. The big bad wolf? Oh no! In fact, I am so bad that people call me a big, bad wolf. I'm so bad that I do things like huff and paw and blow your house down. So bad that one time I ate a little boy just because he kept crying wolf. And now I've set a trap for Little Red Riding Hood all because I want to get to Grandma's house first. Why, you ask? Well, because I'm going to eat her. Don't act surprised. I told you, I am bad. So, Little Red Riding Hood is probably stuck in their trap somewhere. And look at me. I'm on my way to Grandma's house. Bon appetit. Hello? Grandma? It's me. Ah, watch out. Meanwhile, ugh, I'm totally stuck. All right, time to show off my survival skills. Super crucial survival skill number one, yell for help. Help! 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 Kids, I yelled and yelled, but it didn't seem like anyone was around to hear. What's that saying? If a tree falls in a forest and there's no one around to hear it, does it even make a sound? Well, that's how I felt. Like a sad, lonely tree. Hello? Huh? Hello? I'm over here! 
Where? Here! Keep talking! I'll follow your voice! Oh, well, I've been stuck here for a while, and I was going to my grandma's because I was, I was, but I stopped because there was a wolf, because then I said, so I got some flowers, and then I picked the flowers, I put them in my bag, and I was running, and I was running, and I was so tired, a little bit hungry, too. And you know, I feel like I'm kind of sweating. It's a little bit humid today, and, oh, hi, I got stuck in this trap. Can you help me? Of course. There you go. Oh. I'm free. <laughs> Thanks, mister. Name's Big Al, licensed lumberjack. I'm Little Red Riding Hood. Pleased to make your acquaintance. You may be wondering what I'm doing in the woods this late. Well, I'm on my way to my grandma's house. See, she's sick. Everything was fine until I got distracted by that old wolf. I think I'm allergic to him. And then I got stuck in this darn trap. You say you saw a wolf? Yeah, a talking wolf. Crazy, right? Did he have a fancy sounding accent? Yeah, he did actually. How did you know? That wolf is bad news. But he seems so nice. Little Red, if you don't mind, I'd like to walk with you the rest of the way to your grandma's house. You know, that wolf, he might be dangerous. Oh, I'd be most appreciative, Big Al. Aw, that is so nice. So Big Al the Lumberjack walked with me, keeping watch for the wolf. But we didn't see him. And I didn't have any sniffles or sneezes at all, so he must have been far away. <gasps> Look, there's my grandma's house. Thanks for the escort, Big Al. <laughs> no problem. See you around. Grandma, it's me, Little Red. <clears throat> Come on in. Wow, she sounds really sick. Good thing I'm here. <laughs> Grandma? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Hello, Little Red. Need a tissue? Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Okay, so that's not my grandma, obviously. It's the big bad wolf, but he's wearing my grandmother's clothes. <laughs> As if that would fool me. Whatever, I'll just play along. What would you do if this happened to you? Wow, Grandma, you look real sick. Yes, I'm quite ill. I mean, just awful. You look dreadful. Terrible. Okay, I get it. Enough. And my, how big your teeth look. I don't remember your teeth looking so ridiculously huge. Oh, I mean, oh. And you're so hairy. I don't remember you being so fuzzy. I should probably give you a nice shave. Let me go fetch a razor. No. I mean, I should lie down. I'm feeling quite queasy. Oh, of course. So I tucked in the big bad wolf. Weird, I know. <laughs> he actually did seem a little ill, though. Went out like a light. But never mind that. I needed to find my grandma. I looked all around the house. Under beds. Behind the curtains. Inside cupboards. In the basement. Grandma. In the closets. On the roof. Grandma. Everywhere. Where could she be? But then I heard something. Uh, Grandma? I looked everywhere. Where could the sound be coming from? Little Red. I followed the sound of my grandmother's voice all the way to... Help me. Huh? Get me out of here, Red. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Shh. The wolf is sleeping. How did you get inside his belly? He ate me. What? Swallowed me in one gulp. Lucky for me, he doesn't chew his food. That's why he was feeling so queasy. Well, I'm gonna get you out of there, Grandma. Don't you worry. Hurry. Achoo! Bless you. Thank you. So kids, I was really in a pickle. How was I supposed to get my grandmother out of the big bad wolf's belly? I decided to consult an expert the internet. Uh, I keep trying to get grandma to upgrade. Come on, come on. I'm in a hurry, internet. What's time for this? Yeesh. Finally. Okay, here we go. What to do when your grandma gets eaten by a big bad wolf? Hmm. Says here, I gotta make the wolf throw up. Ew. Gross. Or else I'd have to perform surgery to get her out? Ugh. I know. I'll call the veterinarian, of course. Hello? 
Dr. Veterinarian, I have a bit of an emergency. I need an operation for my, uh, pet, Wolf. Oh, you don't? Okay, thanks anyway. <sighs> okay, so it turned out the veterinarian had a strict no wolf policy. Okay, Grandma, looks like we're gonna need to do the throw up thing. Yuck. Oh, oh no, where'd he go? Where'd the big bad wolf take my grandma? Oh, oh no, run! I ran outside. Grandma! Grandma! I figured the wolf couldn't have gotten very far, so I set off through the woods to find them. But the woods were getting a little dark and extra scary. Uh, but I knew I had to be brave to rescue my grandma from the big bad wolf. Slow down, you're jostling me. Can it, Granny? Mind your manners, young man. I've got to remember to chew next time. What was that? Boy, I wish I had picked a less annoying grandma to eat. Oh. I heard that. Grandma! Ah! Oh, no, not her. Over here, little red. Ow! Jostling. Grandma! Grandma! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back. You know me, of course. I am the big bad wolf. Yes, we all know you're big and bad. whoop de doo That's Little Red's grandma. She's in my belly. Yep, and it stinks to high heaven in here. Shush, grandma, and quit moving around in there. You're giving me indigestion. You just wait. Little Red will come and save me. She's the smartest little whippersnapper I ever saw. But she has to find me first, and she'll never do that. <laughs> that is so not cool. Check it out. I've got the best video games, a milkshake machine, a foosball, and a super classy waterbed. This is where I hibernate, AKA nap for the entire winter. Wolves don't hibernate. That's for bears. Well, that's not fair. Hibernation is the best. You eat a huge meal, and then you settle down for a long winter's nap. What could be better? Whatever. And you should be glad, Granny. That means you'll be safe in my tummy for a long, long time. So I'd been all over the dark woods looking for the big bad wolf and, of course, my grandma. For a while, I could hear my grandma calling for me, but then I lost track of her. Grandma! 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 See, nothing. I was so scared. What if I never found her? I was starting to freak out. And when I freak out, the only thing I can do to calm me down is a solo dance party. Wow, this is so fun. Little Red? <laughs> Celebrating because your grandma's all better? No, not even close. She's gone and I can't find her, Big Al. You were right about the wolf. He's big and he's bad and he ate my grandma. What? Yeah, I know. So I've been looking all over for her and it's like they just disappeared. So, you're dancing? That's what I do to calm down. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Well, let's go find your grandma. You help me? Of course. You think I'm gonna stand by while some big bad wolf is terrorizing nice girls and eating their grandmas? It's on. All right, <laughs> let's go kick some big bad wolf tail. <laughs> so, we were off to find the big bad wolf and rescue my grandma. <laughs> A gazillion hours later. But the finding part turned out to be really super crazy hard. It seriously was like the big bad wolf had just disappeared into thin air. Oh, where are they? We've looked all over the woods and no sign of them anywhere. Oh, and my nose didn't even tingle once. Huh? Oh, <laughs> I'm allergic to the wolf. So when I'm near him, my nose gets all itchy and sniffly. It's like my spidey sense. I see, and no sniffles? Nope, I'm the perfect picture of health. Unfortunately, I feel like we just need a lucky break. I know, right? Well, no use in hanging around here. Yeah, let's go. What? No, that can't be it. 
That's right, walk away. Nothing to see here. <laughs> what? Is Little Red nearby? Little Red, I'm right here. Come back. It's no use, Granny. <sighs> Just about time for my nap. So keep it down in there, okay? Ah, uh, uh, What was that? Nothing. Shh. I knew she'd come back. Little Red, Little Red. Ah, <sighs> Big Al, I sneezed. Oh, sorry. Bless you. No, Al, I sneezed. Oh, right. That means he's right under a uh, uh, nose. Whew, that was a close one. Let's keep reading. Chapter five. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey, guys. So yeah, I was starting to fear I'd never find the big bad wolf and save my grandma. But then my reliable big bad wolf detector went off. My allergies. Achoo! Achoo! Oh, so he's got to be here somewhere. But where? Huh? Is he hiding up in the tree branches? Maybe he has a tree house. Tree houses are very cool. Yeah, they are. <laughs> uh, doesn't look like there's anything up there. I don't get it. We've looked all over. To the left. To the right. We've looked up. Hey, we haven't looked down yet. Oh, well, I think that we would have noticed if you were sitting on the ground, Al. <laughs> Maybe he's underneath the ground. Hmm, like a super secret big bad wolf hideout or something. <gasps> I know it sounds crazy, but... Hey, what's that blinking red light? Huh? Uh-oh. They better watch out. Looks like a security camera. In the woods? Ah! Did you hear that? The wolf! Ha <laughs> ha! We're on to you, wolf. Yeah, watch out! Here we come! Uh, Big Al, how do we get down there? Good question. Wait, I got it. Okay, nope, that don't work. Ha 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 ha! Nice try! Dang! Now how are we gonna get down there? Um, Big Al? Look! Hey! Did I do that? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of by accident, but whatever! Let's go! Gotcha! Freeze, Wolfie! Little Red! Thank goodness! Okay, Wolf, it's time to give me back my grandma. Cough her up! Never! Well, I guess Big Al is gonna have to chop her out! Yikes, no way! Whoa, 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 that's not really in my job description. Okay, well, then the Big Bad Wolf is gonna have to throw her up. Ew. Oh, I hate throwing up, it's icky. Well, it's icky being inside here. Do what Little Red says. Ouch, did you just kick me? Yeah, and there's more where that came from, too. Ow, got it out, Granny, or I'll eat Little Red here for dessert. Oh, no, you won't. Hiya! <laughs> Little Red! Yay, I'm so happy! Yuck! Oh, now my breath totally stinks! Ew. Oh, Little Red, I am so glad you found me. Me too, but my job's not over yet. Big Al, let's tie this wolf up. Tie me up! You're going to jail. No! Pretty happy ending, right? <laughs> we saved Grandma and the big bad wolf was about to go to jail. Uh, Little Red? Yeah, what? He got away! What? How? What? No! That can't be! I don't know! He just up and vanished! Granny, did you see which way he went? Don't ask me! Oh no! The big bad wolf is on the loose! Again! Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's keep reading. Chapter 6, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! So, the big bad wolf had escaped, just gone! The moose! Split like a banana! There must be a secret tunnel or something! Cool! This isn't cool, Big Al. We have to get to the wolf. He's a villain. Come on! A secret hideout with an underground escape tunnel? You gotta admit, that's pretty cool. Not if we can't find the escape tunnel. I mean, do we just poke a book or something and the doorway just opens up? Ah! Hey, you found it! Grandma! It looks just like a water slide. Come on, Big Al, we're going in. Wow, that is so cool. Woohoo! We're coming for you, Grandma! Okay, Little Red. Ah! Ouch! Ow! Uh, ow! It's dark 
down here. Where are we? I think we're in the sewer. Like those Ninja Turtles. That means we must be close to town. We'll just climb out and find the police. They'll be able to help us catch the big bad wolf. Nice try, but no. This is actually a dungeon. <laughs> ah, the big bad wolf! Achoo! That's right, and you're my prisoners now. Forever! <laughs> you're trapped. You'll never get out. Wow, that is so mean. No way! Let us out! Huh? Ah! A good lumberjack never travels without his tools. Well then, I guess I'll just have to run! Ow! Aw, oh, guess you're just trapped down there forever now, huh? <laughs> Sad. Okay, so now I can finally report that there was a happy ending. We fetched the police and they came for the big bad wolf. Big Al and I got super cool deputy badges and our pictures in the paper. And Grandma got a high-tech security system to keep the big bad wolves out. Hello? It's me, Grandma. Hi, not a big bad wolf or anything. <laughs> Just making sure. Gotta play it safe. And best of all, I got my grandma slash best friend back. <laughs> I went to visit her like every single day. Big Al even came over sometimes. And we would just sit around and laugh about the time the big bad wolf got trapped in his own stinky dungeon. <laughs> and eat ice cream, of course. <laughs> ice cream is essential when you're hanging out with friends. Wow, that was so much fun. Uh, I just love happy endings. Thanks for coming, bye. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today, we're reading Cinderella. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Ahem, that's not my real name. That's just what my mean stepsisters and stepmother call me. <laughs> my real name is Ella. Actually, let's begin my story there. When I was Ella and everything was nice and peaceful and lovely. I was an only child, but I had a ton of pets. So when I was little, I was never ever lonely. Two cats, Sir Bonkers and Lady Blinky, a dog named Patches, a hamster named Spinner, a tortoise named Fudge, a lizard named Elizabeth, a pony named Pegasus, not a real Pegasus, but that would be really cool, <laughs> and a goldfish named Goldie. Oh, so cute. Okay, so Goldie wasn't such great company. Moving on, my dad was the greatest dad of all time, seriously. And he told the awesomest bedtime stories ever. And then the big bad wolf said, little pig, little pig, let me in. And then the little pig squealed, not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. See, he was really good at doing voices. So let's see, my pets were cool, my dad was the best. Oh, and our town was super neat too. We lived in the kingdom, excuse me, a queendom of Queen Elaine the First. She put on fabulous tea parties and concerts and musicals, like all the time. <laughs> so yeah, things were pretty great, but I must have been cursed by an evil witch or something because one day my dad told me that he was getting married. <gasps> okay. That's not the terrible part. It would have been awesome if you were marrying Queen Elaine or somebody cool like that, but no way. Somehow he found the meanest lady ever in the history of meanness. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. But it wasn't his fault, I guess, because at first she pretended to be so nice. Hello there, Ella. Do you like candy? Yes, ma'am. Hey. Too late. You snooze, you lose. And those were my two new stepsisters, Gritzel and Unga. They never even bothered pretending to be nice. Anyway, my dad was duped, and suddenly I had a new family. Oh, that's so not cool. My stepsisters had a real sukasa is mikasa kind of attitude. In other words, they took all my that's stuff. Mine. I want it. Mine. Gimme. Okay, I'm all about sharing is caring, guys, but come on, you can't take all my clothes. Here, you can wear this. Then they said they were scared of all my animals, so scared that my dad had to banish them all to the barn outside. Even a lizard bit, she'll get cold. Too scary. But what about Goldie? Come on, all she does is sit there and go. Take her away! They all have to go! I'm sorry, guys. I'll visit you. Wow, that is so mean. 
The great animal exodus wasn't the end of it. Whenever my dad was away, the step monsters would treat me like a servant. I did the sweeping. I did the windows. I did the vacuuming. And being big old meanies, Gritzel and Unga constantly made messes on purpose. Whoops. I cleaned nonstop, day in and day out. And I was a mess, always covered in dust and grime, which led to me getting a new nickname. Ew, Ella, you're all covered in cinders from the chimney. Maybe we should call you Cinder Ella. Cinder Ella. So yeah, Ella. this all lasted a few years. Then my dad left for this big fishing trip expedition thingy. That's when my stepmother decided I should move into the barn. It was cold and dark and a little scary, but I had my animals and that was nice. Aw, plus some field mice. Hi guys. <laughs> Anyway, my dad wouldn't be gone forever, right? He'd come back and see how mean my step family was and give them the boot, right? What would you do if you were there? Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Life in the barn wasn't so bad. Cinderella had made a nice little room for herself. <laughs> being that much closer to the rooster meant I never overslept. And it sure was convenient being able to just roll over and start my chores. <laughs> but I missed my old life, especially my dad. It seems like he had been gone for his fishing trip like forever. Then I heard the awful news. Extra, extra, awful news. Local dad captured by pirates. Oh no, I hope he'll be okay. Yep, my dad had been captured by a gang of pirates. And to make matters worse, my stepmother and stepsisters didn't even seem to care. He'll be fine. Who cares? I can't worry. It gives me wrinkles. Oh, they were the worst. Fine, I'll go find him. Don't be ridiculous. You have to stay here and take care of us. No way. I'm going to go find him and fight the pirates. I'll hire a search party. They'll find him and bring him home. Really? Really. But like, really, really? Really, really, really. Gosh. Can we stop talking about pirates and like get some breakfast? Yeah, really. Cinder, really? <laughs> oh, fine. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. With my dad gone so long, things went from very bad to way worse. My stepmother decided it was time for my stepsisters to get married. And of course, I had to help. There were etiquette lessons. The most difficult task was teaching them how to be not terrible. Would you like to go for a walk? You don't have a carriage. Ew, next. Okay, so maybe don't yell so much. Why? Never mind. It was beginning to feel pretty useless. My stepsisters were just big old meanies. Meanwhile, my dad was still out there somewhere with a crusty old gang of pirates. Actually, that doesn't sound so bad compared to these guys. Good thing I still have you guys. <laughs> Good night, Sir Bonkers, Lady Blinky, Patches, Spinner, Fudge, a Lizard Beth, Pegasus, Goldie. <laughs> Good night to you, Squeakers, Pip and Puff Puff. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Rooster. Shh. Save it for the morning. <laughs> that was so funny. That night, I had a beautiful dream. My dad was home safe and sound. My stepmother and Gritzel and Unga were nowhere in sight. Amazing, I was all dressed up, no more rags, and I had the prettiest slippers. It was almost as if they were made of glass. Ah! <gasps> What's all that racket? Why didn't you wake me, Mr. Rooster? We must get to work immediately. This is so exciting. What's going on? The queen is having a ball and we're all invited. Whoa! I just had a dream that I was dressed up in a beautiful gown. <laughs> just like I was going to a royal ball. That's so funny. That is funny. You in a gown. Get it? Because you wear rags. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Whatever. They're rude. I was used to it, but a royal ball? Now this was exciting. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I have to make a dress and my hair. What am I gonna do with my hair? And I have to prepare some witty banter. I haven't been around people, well, people I actually wanna talk to in forever. 
I hope people still like knock-knock jokes. Those are my specialty. My stepmother had said I couldn't go to the ball. Well, I would just have to find a way, wouldn't I? <laughs> I began preparations in secret. My stepsisters went through dresses like they were going out of style, so I had lots of material to choose from to craft a perfect gown. <laughs> a little satin here, a little silk there, some velvet, pearls, and voila! <laughs> that looks so beautiful. <gasps> the most beautiful dress in the world. Oh. Shoes wouldn't be so easy though. My stepsisters had thrown out all of my shoes back when they first moved in. None of these shoes fit. <laughs> anyway, one day I was cleaning the attic when I found a box that I had never noticed before. <gasps> shoes, these must have belonged to my mom. They were beautiful slippers that looked almost as if they were made of glass, just like in my dream. <gasps> and next to the shoes was the most exquisite necklace I'd ever seen. Everything was coming together perfectly. <gasps> That's amazing. But it's not like the royal ball was the only thing I was thinking about. Curiously, I hadn't heard anything about my dad. You know, the whole being captured by pirates thing. Supposedly my stepmother was on it, but I just wasn't sure I could trust her. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. Harvey Beeswax, private investigator, at your service. Hi, Mr. Beeswax. My dad was captured by a gang of pirates. I need your help. Pirates, eh? Yes, and my stepmother said that she can't find him, but she's done diddly squat. Diddly squat? That's not enough. I know, so do you think you can find him? It'll be tough, but I'm the best private eye in the city. If anybody can find your pop, it'll be me. Great. I charge three gold bits an hour, plus expenses. Oh, right, um, money. Yeah, I don't have any of that. Sorry, kid. No money, no detective. What? No, that can't be. Wait, what if I paid you in jewels? Jewels? I like jewels. What do you got? So, I brought my mother's necklace to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Oh well, at least I still had the dress and shoes. Or so I thought. When I got home, I found this. It's mine. No, mine! Cinderella, who did you make this dress for? Me or Gritzel? Um, it's clearly for me. Blue makes you look like a blueberry. Well, blue makes you look like a, a blue whale. Cinderella, please settle this. I, I, I made it for myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Funny joke, right? <laughs> no, not really. Gee, I can't decide who it would look prettier on. Me, obviously. Uh-uh, me. Oops, I didn't like it anyway. Okay, well, let's see. I had started the day with a lovely ball gown, a diamond necklace, and glass slippers. And suddenly I had no dress, no jewelry. Well, at least I still had the shoes. They didn't fit anyway. Well, back to square one. That's so sad. Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. It's finally the day of the ball. And I had nothing to wear. What do you think, Pegasus? Could this be shabby chic? <laughs> yeah, you're right, too casual. Cinderella, come here. <laughs> Ugh, gotta get to work. Meanwhile, hmm, no sign of Cinderella's old man yet, but I'll solve this case. I hope they'll be okay. Getting Gritzel and Unga ready was no small task. They required bubble baths, manicures, pedicures, blowouts. Finally, my stepsisters were ready for the royal ball. You guys look really nice. Um, we know. Okay, well, have a great time. <laughs> Unga, don't yell too much, and Gritzel, remember to say please and thank you. But don't forget to have some fun. That's quite enough talk, Cinderella. Goodbye. I'll be honest, I was kind of sad. I retreated to the barn with some snacks to eat my feelings. I know, it's pretty cliche, but I was sad, okay? That is so sad. And then, I don't know why, but I yelled out, oh, if I only had a fairy godmother. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! What? Hello! Oh. 
<coughs> Excuse me, frog in my throat. What's up? Did you find my dad? No, not yet. But don't give up, kid. I just came here to scrub for clues. Clues? Here? Yeah, you never know what you might find if you just look. You okay? Me? What? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not crying or anything. Okay. Well, uh, see ya. He left, and I went back to feeling sorry for myself. Why? 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 Mr. Beeswax? Sorry I'm late, sugar, but better late than never, right? Who are you? Your fairy godmother. I thought that part was pretty obvious. Wow, that is so cool. Whoa, I thought that was just fairy tale stuff. Cool. A lot of people think that, but I'm real. Watch this. Awesome! I know, right? So how does this work? Do I get like three wishes or something? Three wishes? What do I look like, a genie in a bottle? Oh, so no wishes? Darling, I'm here to make all your wishes come true. But not all at once. It doesn't work that way. Oh. And some of the wishes will be wishes you didn't even know you wished yet. Say what now? I know what's in your heart, sugar. How? Honey, I'm your fairy godmother. It's fairy magic, you see? Oh, that makes sense. All right, so first things first, let's get you ready for the ball. The ball? Yes, I so want to go to the ball. I had a dress and a necklace and shoes, but my stepsisters, they tore everything up. Well, not the necklace. I gave that to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Long story, but I really, 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 want really- want to go to the ball, yes, I know. And with a wave of my magic wand. Wow, that was so much fun. Let's keep reading. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Cinderella had just been explaining in detail the recent happenings that she had experienced to her fairy godmother. Yes, dear, I know. You want to go to the ball. So as I was saying, with a wave of my magic wand. Oh, yeah. Like, why wouldn't I want to go? Dancing, candy, disco balls, handsome princes, hopefully chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. Ooh, this is so exciting. OK, hold the phone, honey. We can't have you going to the ball looking like this. Ah, uh, rude. Well, I just mean, you, you look, uh, like a mess. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You just don't look like a princess, that's all. Okay, listen, fairy GM, I think you need to quit while you're ahead and just help a sister out. Right, so what's your favorite color? Blue, uh, bluish aqua, turquoise, um, aquamarine, bright blue. Okay, all right, any shade of blue, I get it. With the wave of my magic wand. Yeah. And with all my magical powers combined. Yeah. I will give you the most beautiful, flowy, princessy, sparkly, on sale from Black Friday. Huh? Ball gown. Yeah. <laughs> That's so magical. And what do you think, honey? I love it. Hi. Oh, nothing, dear. I'm so excited. The prince is deaf gonna want to juju on that beat with me at the ball. <laughs> uh, you won't be dancing with those tootsies. Uh, yeah, I'm due for a mani-pedi soon. Well, stick your hands out and close your eyes, my little ragamuffin love. Boopy boopy blabbity boo. These are the bomb. Ooh, hopefully I won't break them. I'm kind of a klutz. <laughs> that looks so beautiful. Okay, I better get on my way. Oh wait, pretty sure the castle is like 48 miles away. That would take approximately 864 minutes if I walk, if I hustle. Cinderella, and... get it together. I'm gonna hook you up. Now go get me a pumpkin, spaghetti squash, any gourd or root vegetable ought to do. Uh, no gourds to speak of, but how about this? My Halloween bucket. Well, let me just get it. That'll do, I suppose. 
Cinderella put the bucket down, and with one more swirl of the magic wand, the bucket became a gorgeous, sparkling carriage. A carriage is kind of like a stroller, but for adults. <laughs> I am gonna look so cool riding up in this thing. <laughs> You're gonna look cool for sure, Cinderella, but you also need to act cool. You simply need to follow my four fabulous formulas for fetching friends at a farty. Excuse me, I mean party. <laughs> that was so funny. Oh yeah, I could use all the help I can get. Step one, always laugh at people's jokes or tell your own. Oh, I've been told I have an amazing laugh. Wonderful, let's hear it. <laughs> All right, that's very distinctive. Uh, maybe just take it down a few notches. Okay, whatever. What's next? Step two, find common interests. Cheese puffs? Oh, those are my favorite snack. Snack, jinx, <laughs> same. I love those. See, we're so similar. <laughs> okay, cheese puffs, got it. Okay, number three, be a dancing queen. Okay, this one is easy. I love dancing. Let me show you how it's done. You go, girl! Do your thing! Whew, I was quite the mover and shaker in my day. Oh, this is so fun! Okay, so number four, I'm getting antsy and ready to go. Oh, well, you better get a move on. Um, I'll text you the rest. Sounds great, fairy godmother. <laughs> I'm just gonna be myself and have a blast. Hey, uh, who's driving this thing? My stepmother wouldn't let me go for my driver's license test. I almost forgot, you over there. And y'all over here. <laughs> well, we're off. <laughs> Thanks so much for everything, fairy. <laughs> you're the bestest in all the land. Well, you're certainly welcome. This is gonna be the best night of my life. Oh no, I forgot to tell her about the midnight thing. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. What is wrong with you? You forgot to tell Cinderella about the midnight rule. What were you thinking? Yoo-hoo, Cinderella! The fairy godmother caught up to the carriage and shouted after Cinderella. But clearly Cinderella was having so much fun, she didn't even notice. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. Ah! Oh, you, uh, you scared me half to death. <laughs> that was hilarious. Cinderella, you can't go yet. Ah, fairy, you gotta cut the cord and let me go. I'm a grown woman. No, I mean the spell. Say what now? The spell at midnight. You have to be long gone from the royal ball by then. Uh, I have no intention of leaving when the party is still hopping. No, you absolutely must. No. You have to. No. You have to. Cinderella, listen to me. If you don't, then all this magic will wear off. What? No. That can't be. There's always a catch. But don't worry about it. Go, enjoy yourself. Just keep track of the time. No prob. I'll set an alarm on my phone. So Cinderella continued on her journey to the castle, super excited and super nervous to meet the prince. You guys, this is gonna be the best night ever! At the ball, Cinderella is having the time of her life! Woohoo! When suddenly she noticed two very familiar but not so friendly faces, her stepsisters. Ah, uh, brother. Or should I say, a sister. <laughs> These two. But the stepsisters didn't even notice her because they were too busy trying to vie for the prince's attention. Oh, by the way, there's the prince. That prince is so handsome. Ooh, Unga, that prince is gonna love my dress. He's totes gonna dance the night away with me. No way, Grits. I'm sure he'll notice my breathtaking eyes and ask me to marry him. Meanwhile, Cinderella was doing her own thing and having so much fun at the ball. Then I told him, that's not a squirrel, it's a hamburger. <laughs> oh, Princey, you look hungry. Let me fetch you a treat. No, I will. Ugh. Cinderella was totally enjoying her night out and away from the barn that she kind of forgot there was a prince at all. Hey guys, who wants milkshakes? Cinderella, you are so much fun. Cinderella, guys, I don't want my stepsisters to overhear that I'm Cinderella. Please, um, please call me Sandy. Sandyrella, yep, that's me. <laughs> Whew, that was a close one. Why haven't we seen you around the kingdom before? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, I've just been, um, you guys, 
Oh no, I don't want the people to know I live in a barn and I'm basically a servant. Oh, what were Carrie's rules again? Oh yeah, common interests. Cheese puffs, don't you guys love cheese puffs? Oh, <laughs> cheesy, oh, yes. Those are amazing. Oh, yes. I love yes. them so much, they're so good. Ew, that was close. So Cinderella got back to the party, but she also started getting a bit sleepy. Woo, I am pooped. But I can't stop now. <laughs> Who knows when there'll be another royal ball. <laughs> I'm sure I still got time. But the whole evening, the prince had been noticing the mystery girl, Cinderella, or <clears throat> Sandy-rella. <laughs> and how happy she looked, and how she was being nice to everyone, and ate tons of cake without a care in the world. Whoa, she is a seriously cool chica. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, excuse me. Kind of a klutz. Oh, no, no, it was my mistake. Here, let me help you out. Aw, oh, that's so sweet. So, uh, this is some party. Oh, this old thing? Yeah, my mom goes kind of crazy. Yeah, my dad's kind of crazy, too. He was kidnapped by pirates. Yarg. Pirates? Whoa. Yeah, pirates. Do you, you want to dance? dance? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh wait, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh my oh, gosh. gosh. I like your crown. Thanks. I like your dress. Yeah, blue's my favorite color. No way, mine too. Ooh, common interest, bonus. So next week, uh, we're having this mini golf tournament here at the palace. Do you think you want to come? That sounds awesome. Cinderella had wondered how she would sneak away from her stepmother and stepsisters and come back to hang out with the prince, but whatever, she would figure it out. So it's a date, uh, I, I mean. But Cinderella didn't hear the prince because the music had gotten louder and she was feeling the beat. So loud, in fact, that she didn't hear her alarm on her phone ringing. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Let's keep reading. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. What's that noise? Huh? I said, what's that noise? Oh, it's just my phone. <laughs> oh no, my phone. I gotta go. Wait up! I didn't get your name. Oh no! Oh no! 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 Oh, oh no! Oh no! Wait up! Oh no! <laughs> well, it was nice knowing you, beautiful glass slipper, but I gotta go. Wait! You left your shoe. Keep it. Huh? <sighs> At least the carriage is still... Oh, great. And so with one shoe, Cinderella walked all the way home, all 48 miles, which took exactly 864 minutes. She wasn't too sad though. I mean, guys, <laughs> the prince danced with me a ton and I made so many friends and I did a conga line and the limbo and the robot. <laughs> And I must have had like five pieces of cake. <laughs> it was the best night of my whole life. <gasps> That's amazing. That happiness lasted all through the next morning, even though her stepsisters were being particularly annoying. The prince is going to ask me on a date. No way. He's going to ask me. 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 Well, we'll see who he putts with at the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. The Royal Mini Golf Tournament. I almost forgot. And wait. Ritzel and Oonga got invited, oh boy. Mini golf tournament, huh? Don't worry about it, Cinderella. You're not allowed to go. Why not? Mom, tell Cinderella she can't go to the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. Cinderella, you most certainly cannot go to the Royal Mini Golf Tournament. Ugh, I hope that girl from last night doesn't go. She was the worst. Wow, that is so mean. What girl? This girl's Sandy or something. She hugged the prince for like a whole hour. So annoying. Gee, <laughs> yeah, I hope she doesn't show up. Cinderella decided she'd better practice her golf swing before the big tournament. Oh, you better believe I'm going. <laughs> I don't know how, but I'm going. Fairy godmother better come through for a sister. I'm gonna need some new duds. <laughs> what do you think, Sir Bonkers? How's my swing? <laughs> I guess I need to keep practicing. <laughs> Finally, the big day had arrived. Time to putt. <laughs> Cinderella waited for her fairy godmother to arrive. I wonder what kind of outfit I'm gonna get today. Oof, and I hope I get a new pair of shoes. 
I love these glass slippers, but I can't golf in just one shoe. <laughs> I probably need sneakers anyway. Where is she? There she is. Ew. Mom says you have to go with us to the mini golf tournament. Yay, I'm so happy. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, can I borrow a dress or something? I mean, I can't go looking like this. <laughs> You shouldn't go anywhere looking like that. But no, you can't borrow a dress. Unga, please. Cinderella, ugh, no one cares what you look like. We just need you to like hold our bags and get us drinks and stuff. Oh. So like, hurry up. Guys, the prince can't see me like this. All right, fairy godmother. <laughs> It'd be super great if you could show up about now. Uh, okay. Fine, I'll just go to the prince's palace wearing rags. No big deal or anything. <sighs> eh? What do you think will happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. There she is. The big day of the royal mini golf tournament had finally arrived and Cinderella was there. Awesome, right? Not so awesome. My fairy godmother didn't show up. And look at me, I'm wearing rags at the palace. You know where the prince lives? <sighs> That's so sad. Meanwhile, my stepsisters are playing miniature golf with said prince. Can my life get any worse? Heads up. Ow, oh, I guess it can. So yeah, Cinderella was pretty bummed. And so was the prince. He had really been looking forward to his mystery girl showing up. Why are you carrying around a shoe? Long story. And why do you keep gazing off into the distance? No reason. Hey, Prince, watch me putt. Huh? Oh yeah, that's great. I didn't even swing the club yet, ugh. Sorry, hey, Pretzel. It's Gritzel. Do you know the girl I was dancing with the other night? Nuh-uh. Do you know her? What girl? I didn't see a girl. I have to find her. I must see her again. Oops. Heads up! Hey, do I know you? Eek! The prince! What do I do? Play it cool, Cinderella. Play it cool. Uh, no, not me, mate. You must have me confused with someone else. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Okay, gotta go! That couldn't have been. Or could it? Woo! That was a close one. Great. Just great! I blew it! Uh, Cinderella had really, really, really wanted to talk to the prince, but she panicked. She was sure the prince would just see her in rags and reject her. I mean, princes like princesses, right? Right? So that settles it. I cannot let him know that this is the real me. Hey, Cinderella! Well, what? Uh, who's that? <laughs> Cinder who? <laughs> oh, hey, Mr. Beeswax. You got news about my dad? We're getting real close to cracking the case, kid. I got one of my best guys following a pirate ship as we speak. That is amazing. That's great. Uh, what are you doing here? Official palace business. I can't discuss it. But between you and me, the prince has got a crush. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure. Whatever. That's cool. <laughs> Who is it? That's classified, kid. But get this. He doesn't know her name. Go on. Says she showed up at the ball and then she just ran off. Go figure, he thought she'd be here today. But when she didn't show, he called me. So like, what did he say about this girl? I can't really discuss it cause I'm a private eye, the keyword being private, but he says she's super cool. Yeah. And really funny. Yeah. And a fabulous dancer. She sounds great. <laughs> yeah, but she said she'd be here and she didn't show. Kind of rude if you ask me. I'm sure she has a really good reason. <laughs> we'll see. The prince is a good fella. Hate to see him get his heart broken. Well, gotta get back to work. She could be anywhere. She could be right under my nose. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> well, the good news is the prince obviously totally likes me. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, so cute. The bad news is I have absolutely no idea what to do. Several days passed and Cinderella had not heard any news about the prince and his mystery girl. She tried to come up with a plan. Maybe I, no. Well, what if I, no, that won't work. Oh, I got it. I could, uh, 
No. Cinderella, I need a pedicure. Right now? Yes, now. Me too! Haven't you heard? The prince is going around to every house in the queendom to find his dream girl. Say what now? He has the shoe, and supposedly he's going to marry whoever fits into it. So, like, our feet need to look good. Yeah, we need prince-worthy tootsies. The prince is coming here? <laughs> yeah. And one of us is going to become a princess. Yeah. Me. No way. Me. 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 This Me. is going to be interesting. Me. Me. Those stepsisters are so mean. Let's keep reading. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Cinderella was so nervous. The prince was coming to her house. Oh man, fairy godmother, if there was ever a time when you need to help a sister out, it's now. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? She tried rubbing a lamp. What? It worked for Aladdin. <laughs> that was so funny. She tried wishing on a falling star. No stars, shoot. And finally, Cinderella tried to conjure her fairy godmother with a magical spell. Blippity, bloppity, blob, blurpity, blap, madgages, fairious, godmotherist, come it now. If. She's here, yay. Hello, official royal business, open up. Oh no, the prince is here. Let me try on that shoe. Me first. No, me. One at a time, ladies. One at a time. Hi, Princey. Remember me? Sure, yeah. Hi, Pretzel. It's Gritzel. Uh, looks like it doesn't fit. Sure it does. Perfect. I've never worn such a comfortably fitted shoe. <laughs> Take that, bad guy. <laughs> And there are no other ladies in the house? No. Nada. No siree, Bob. Wait a second. Doesn't Cinderella live here? Cinder who? Never heard of her. There's another girl here? Please, fetch her at once. Your Highness, the other girl was not at the ball. I can promise you that. She lives in a barn. She's totally yuck. Nah, she's a lovely girl. I'll get her for you, Prince. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Mr. Beeswax. The Prince wants you to try on a shoe. He's still after that mystery girl. Oh, I can't go out there. I know you weren't at the ball, but it'll just take a minute and it'll make the prince happy. No, like, I really can't go out there. I'm a mess, beeswax. <gasps> what Unga said is true. I'm totally yuck. <laughs> what? You're a cutie. Come on. Okay. Now I really, really, really wish I had my fairy godmother. <gasps> Nothing? Come on! Hey, you look awfully familiar. Yeah? <laughs> I'm, um, uh, supposed to try on a shoe? Try not to stink it up. Well, what do you know? It fits! It's you! Yay, I'm so happy! O-M-G! No way! Your Highness, I assure you, she was not at the ball! Well, actually, I was. <laughs> Super long story, but I really wanted to go and you wouldn't let me. But then my fairy godmother showed up and oh yeah, apparently I have a fairy godmother. <laughs> anyway, she showed up, waved around her magic wand and I got a dress and shoes, these shoes. Well, the other one's in the barn, but <laughs> anywho, then I went to the ball and I met the prince. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> fairy godmother. There's no such thing as a fairy godmother. Sorry I'm late, Cinderella, but your fairy godmother is at your service. <gasps> the fairy godmother. Let's keep reading. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Where were you? I needed you. I'm so, so, so sorry, honey. I've been at a fairy magic conference and these trolls crashed the party and it was just a huge old mess. Anyway, what's up? Oh, that's the prince over there. <gasps> oh, he's cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a mess, but they made me try on the shoe and of course it fit. <laughs> well, that sounds like a good thing. But now he knows I'm not a princess. This is terrible. <laughs> Cinderella, can you tell us what's going on, please? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, um, this is my fairy godmother. Fairy godmother, this is everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. How you doing? Hello. And now, with a wave of my magic wand, I will transform raggedy ragamuffin Cinderella here into a beautiful, 
princess. Finally. <laughs> Wait. Huh? You don't have to change a thing. Cinderella, I like you for you. Aw, that is so nice. You do? Ew! You don't need a fancy dress or shoes, or... Um, hold up. Uh, that's really nice and everything, but if my fairy godmother wants to hook me up with some new duds, then I'm a letter. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Okay, fairy godmother, work your magic. Bloopity blabadoo! I'll grab the other shoe later. <laughs> now me. No, my turn. Sorry, girls. A fairy godmother can only have one fairy goddaughter. No, no fair. fair. They'll get over it. <laughs> so it was you the whole time, huh? Right under my nose. Oh, don't worry. You're still my favorite private investigator. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. With all the shoe trying on hubbub, I forgot to tell you. We found your dad. You did? That is amazing. Yeah, my guy called me this morning. He's on the ship, a pirate crusty beard. Well, what are we standing around here for? Let's go rescue Cinderella's dad from the pirates. Arg! What are you doing on my ship? We're here to save my dad, you crusty old pirate. Well, you don't have to be rude. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my girl. Dad! Who are you guys? Harvey Beeswax, private eye. I'm her fairy godmother. I'm the prince, and may I just say, I like your daughter, sir. Long story. <laughs> no time for stories. It's time for you to walk the plank. Ah, pirates! I almost forgot. <laughs> Allow me. Zippity, zamaboo, ta ta, and bye bye. Yay! Yay! Magic to the rescue! Okay, let's pause for a second, because you're probably thinking this day couldn't get any better, right? I mean, the prince found me, my fairy godmother finally showed up and gave me some new princessy clothes, and now my dad had been rescued from the pirates. Talk about a good day. <laughs> but then it got even better. Get this, when we got home, Beeswax put my evil stepmother in the slammer. Turns out, she hired the pirates to take my dad. So evil, right? Anyway, it was pretty much everybody lives happily ever after fairy tale kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, and we decided to let my stepsisters stick around, but they were a lot nicer now that I was a close personal friend of the prince. <laughs> they even started doing their share of the chores. Wow, that was so much fun. I just love happy endings. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Frankenstein. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, I'm Mary Shelley Frankenstein, sister to the world's biggest mischief-making little brother, Victor Frankenstein. You've all heard that story, of course, but I'm here to tell you my version. Okay, here goes. Once upon a time, long, long ago. Okay, it was actually pretty recent, but I like it when stories start that way. <laughs> anyway, once upon a time, not very long ago, there was a boy named Victor. Victor Frankenstein. That's Dr. Frankenstein. He's not a doctor, obviously. He's ten. <laughs> ten and a half. Anyway, one day he was bored. And when Victor Frankenstein gets bored, bad things happen. For example, one time he filled all my shoes with slime. Ew! Victor! That is so not cool. And then one time he put baking soda and vinegar in his teacher's coffee. And yeah, it exploded. Victor! And this one time, oh, this is really bad, he put glue on the toilet seat and my dad got stuck. Ah! Victor? So like I was saying, bored Victor equals bad Victor. And that's how the story begins. I'm bored. I want to make something, something big, Something bad, something epic. I know. Today I'm gonna create a monster! Let's keep reading. Victor went down to his laboratory, AKA our basement, and got to work. That's where he did all his experiments. I should have enough to work with down here. Hmm, let's see. Some fishing hooks, I can use those. Slinky, check. Some nuts and bolts and screws and stuff, sure. Modeling clay, finger paints, glue, grandpa's toupee, perfect. A garbage can, some brooms, a mop, 
googly eyes, a couple of my sister's patriotic girl dolls, my old teddy bear, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Wait, no, I didn't mean it, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Promise. Forgive me? I love you too, Teddy. Aw, that's sweet. But don't be fooled. Victor was up to a seriously naughty scheme. Now back to my seriously naughty scheme. It's time to create my monster. A monster that will wreak havoc and destroy the whole world. <laughs> oh no, don't be scared, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. My monster won't destroy you. Now, time to work. Victor worked all day into the night, not even stopping for snack time. He snipped, ripped, chopped, glued, fastened, refastened, attached thingamabobs and whatchamacallits until finally he was satisfied. My monster! Now to bring him to life. It's alive! Oh no. Okay, I thought that would work. It's alive? How do I turn this thing on? It's, it's, it's alive! <laughs> yes, and now we will unleash chaos onto the world. <laughs> okay, monster, let's go! Oh, are you hungry? Let's see, what do monsters eat? There's some leftover meatloaf in here. It's really gnarly, so you might like that. Nom, 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 nom. Okay, you get enough to eat yet? We have to go wreak havoc and chaos and stuff. Uh. Whoa, awesome! Hey, wait for me! Victor, you stop right there, young man. Who made this mess? My monster did it? Right, sure, a monster did it. Well, guess who's going to clean it up? Me? That's right. But, oh, no buts. But there was a bun, a big one. A real live monster was on the loose. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Everywhere the monster went, people screamed and ran. They all thought he was a big and scary monster, but really, he was probably more afraid than anyone. The world was brand new to him and he couldn't help but be frightened. <gasps> Finally, he found a nice resting spot and fell asleep. Okay, so maybe it wasn't such a good resting spot because during recess, the jungle gym is a pretty happening spot and it wasn't very long until... <laughs> and that woke the monster. Arr! Monster felt a little bit safer in the woods. He sat there and watched the playground, waiting for the kids to leave. A bell rang and the kids left, but then an older group of kids came out, including me. Ow! What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Ah! Ah! Monster, run! Take that, bad guy. I think that was his attempt at a smile. Thank you for chasing away those bullies. But I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Ah! Okay, I'm gonna take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Well, recess is over, so I have to go. See ya. <laughs> oh no, you're sad. Okay, how about this? You stay. Stay here, okay? And I'll be back later. Can you nod and let me know you understand? Mm. Okay, great. <laughs> School's out at three. I'll see you then. Back in the classroom, I made a list. Fun learning activities for monsters. Then after school, I met back up with the monster and we got to work. 
first, we practice language arts. Repeat after me. Monster. 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 Mon. Okay, that's pretty close. Now add the stir. Monster. Monster. Great. Okay, I should really teach you some more words, but that took like an hour, so let's move on to something else. Wow, this is so fun. How about some social skills? Let's try a handshake. Ah. Now we put our hands together and then we shake. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Ah. Okay, you're doing really great, but can you put me down? Ah, good, thanks. All right, next on the list was how do you high five, but let's move on. <laughs> We spent the rest of the afternoon doing our lessons. The monster learned how to sing. <laughs> and how to dance. Go monster, go monster, go, go monster. And we worked on hygiene. Yes, see, after you eat a whole handful of worms and bugs, it's good to wash your hands. <laughs> and speaking of eating, it's time for me to go home for dinner. Do you think you'll be okay here for tonight? <laughs> yeah, you better come with me. I'll hide you in my old playhouse. But by the time I got home and the monster was all settled in, news had gotten out. Reports of the mystery monster have been coming in all day. From people like this gentleman, I nearly ran him over in my car last night. I don't know if my insurance would have covered that. And these innocent children. I was just minding my own business when he tried to hit me with a ball. City officials are urging citizens to stay inside and lock your doors. But some local vigilantes want to take matters into their own hands. Yeah, we're going to get that monster. I ain't afraid of no monster. Uh-oh. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. According to eyewitness reports, the monster has caused over $11,000 in damage, and an old fashioned pitchfork and torch wielding gang of locals has sworn to capture the beast. Yeah. yeah. Back to you, Chuck. Oh dear. I told you it was the monster that wrecked the kitchen. Go to bed, Victor. Well, I couldn't just leave the monster outside in my old playhouse, not with a bunch of vigilantes out there hunting him. <gasps> Shh, okay, you can sleep in here, but you have to be quiet. Mama. Aw, that's sweet. Now, do you want the top bunk or the bottom? Uh. Oh, you're not sleepy? Do you want to play a game? Uh. So we played some games. We played Twister, Right Foot Blue, uh, close enough. Jenga, Jenga, Jenga. Uh, then we went full on slumber party and did spa night. Ah! Well, that was weird. I thought I heard my monster in here. Your monster? Yeah, I created him in the basement. What's he doing with all that gunk on his face? We were having a spa night. What? Monsters don't do spa nights? Monsters are supposed to be ferocious and fierce and wreak havoc. He's not that kind of monster. I found him in the woods by the playground. He saved me from bullies, and now there are bullies looking for him. We have to protect our monster. Our monster? I think you mean my monster. He's coming with me. No way! Hey! Uh, uh, hey, keep it down in there. Quick! Hide the monster! What on earth is going on in here? Nothing, Mom. Yep, nothing to see here. Uh-uh. What was that? Oh, my stomach. I don't think that leftover meatloaf sat too well with me, but uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, well, time for bed. Yes, Mom. Okay, Mom. Now. Uh. Meatloaf! You sure you're okay? Yep, <laughs> good night. See ya manana. Bye. Okay, good night. Let's keep reading. Phew, that was close. Oh, we can't keep him here. There's no way mom and dad will let us keep a monster. True. But we can't take him outside either. The vigilante bully gang is looking for him. What if they hurt him? 
but he's a monster. He could just destroy the gang. Easy peasy. You seem to be forgetting that he's not the destructive, dangerous type. He's a big, sweet softy. Look. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's not gonna wreak any havoc. Hey, I know. Let's take him to Professor Weirdly's house. She'll know what to do. Great idea. Science teachers for the win. <laughs> Okay, now how do we get him out of here without attracting attention? Of course! Aha. Perfect! Let's go! So we set out into the night with our monster. It was a little scary, but there's no time to fear when you're on a mission. Super brave, right? Well, that was all about to change. We didn't know it yet, but the vigilante gang was closing in. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Ooh, I didn't see that coming. Chapter four, here we go. So all was going according to plan. We were on our way to see Professor Weirdly, the science teacher at our school. She would know what to do with the STEM project gone awry. Okay, cool. I can see Professor Weirdly's house. We're almost there. Is that what I think it is? Yep. What do we do now? Um, we could blast them with a giant water balloon or some of their projectiles. Or we could just cast a protective force field around ourselves. Ooh, or we could sick a giant robot on them. Or we could run. That's always an option. Let's go. Oh no, run! What do we have here? Oh, hi, sir. <laughs> nice weather we're having, huh? What are you kids doing out here this time and night? Who, us? Yes, you. We're just out for a little evening stroll. And you? I'm out looking for that monster that's been terrorizing the town. Oh, I haven't heard anything about that. Have you, Victor? No, Mary, not a word. A monster, you say? Who's that? Hmm? I said, who's that? Oh, her? Yes, uh, that's our grandma. Yep, <laughs> old granny. But don't bother trying to talk to her. She's hard of hearing. Arrgh. Granny, we're just telling this nice pitchfork-wielding gentleman that you're a little hard of hearing. <laughs> ah. Well, I guess it's our bedtime. Good night. Excuse us. <laughs> oh, hi guys. We were just leaving. Come on, Granny. <laughs> Seemed too easy, right? We were just gonna walk away, but then suddenly we heard... Meow. Ah. Come on, Gran. Time for bed. Arr! Yeah, that's a kitty. Let's go. But the monster, being a big old sweetheart, jumped mm. into the tree to rescue the kitten. Great. Wow, your granny sure is spry. Hey, she saved the kitten. Okay, Granny, good job. Now let's go. Uh-oh. That's him. That's the monster. Get him. Whoa, this place is crazy. The gang was all riled up, and things were getting very scary. One guy swung his pitchfork up at the monster. Ha! I'll get ya! <laughs> but he missed. Phew! <laughs> but then it landed. Ah! Hey! You stuck me! And that guy had been waving around a torch, so when he got poked with the pitchfork, he accidentally lit another guy's pants on fire. Arr! It was chaos! Finally! We could have just run away at that point, but the monster was such a big old sweetie that he just had to jump down and help. Ah, uh, that's better. Phew, thanks. Hey, wait, he's being nice. Monsters aren't nice. Well, this one is. He protected me from bullies. He rescued that kitten, and now he's helping you. Yeah, and I created him specifically to be a supervillain, too. I don't know what went wrong. So will you guys leave him alone now? Are you sure he's good? Look at him. <coughs> yeah, okay. We'll let you go. But you all better get home soon. It's late. We know. Just one more stop. Come on, guys. Let's go to Professor Weirdly's. Yay! I'm so happy. And Victor, you say you made this all by yourself? Yep. Awesome, right? Very impressive! Where will you keep him, Professor? I think he'll be happy at school. He can live in the lab. So from that night on, our monster lived in Professor Weirdly's science lab at the school. It was great. He took care of the class pets. He helped kids with their homework. 
Well, he tried anyway. He even joined the cheer team. <laughs> he was the best school monster ever, and Victor and I got to see him every day. It was awesome. Yeah, but next time, I'll create a super bad monster that wreaks havoc and mayhem and destruction and, and... Oh boy, here we go. Wow, that was so much fun. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye.